things happen at this point. Two things happen at this point. It's either you are exporting for yourself or you are rendering a service to exporters if you have a pack house. Now, these pack houses are money spinners, just like for the farmers. What happens is if an exporter has avocado to export, they come to us with their produce, with their cartons branded or unbranded, we prepare them, we get the containers to come from my client or whoever is exporting for them, and we get the goods to go to wherever they want to go to for a fee. This um, is another business that can be done from having a, a, an avocado farm. The chain is long and unending. Okay, the slides are up now, Ambassador. Can we see the slides? We can see it. I told you guys that it was rendered. Yes, I can see it. Okay. Okay, yes. So like I was saying from the beginning, pack houses are food processing establishments purpose built to produce, to prepare food products for export. Now this, these products are prepared and they are gotten ready for export. Pack houses are certified. Pack houses are certified by the regulatory bodies. These regulatory bodies are mostly Hello. I think Did I'm muted again. Please go ahead, ma'am. Please go ahead. Okay. I can hear you, Maria. Go ahead. Okay, pack houses are regulated. Pack houses are regulated because you need to know that in the export business, you are competing with the whole world generally. The, the many countries that are into avocado export. And there are rules and regulations as to how your pack house should be. Hello, madam. Yes. Madam, let's do it this I way. Take, I think some people are uh, on mute themselves. So let me mute yourself, then you will mute yourself again. Is it okay now? Please go ahead, but please. Okay, so like I was saying, you need to realize if you're in the pack house sector of export in the food industry, that you will need to get certifications. You are expected to be working at a world standard. So your pack house need to be set up in such a way that you are able to get all these certifications and licenses. The people who are buying these products abroad, they need to see your certifications, that you are neat, you are clean, you have been tested and tried and you're good to go. Now, what happens? It means that if your pack house is certified, you become a gateway to farmers and exporters, knowing that, Products that come from your pack house are certified to be good. The duty of a pack house is not only to pack and export, you are also checking quality and ensuring that whatever goes out of your country is product that you can be proud of. For example, right now in Nairobi, the government regulates when you can harvest avocados. Because of course, some from trees are not matured enough. Some farmers are eager for maybe want of money or something. They want to start exporting before time. They are not allowed to. It is not allowed. 
because by the time you export products that are not matured, you are inadvertently um, damaging the image and the credibility of products that come from your country. So what does government do as a regulatory body as well? They regulate when harvesting will start. There are equipment and machines for that purpose. They actually go around the farms, they check the, the fruits, and the machines will tell you what level of maturity each farm has or each plant or each fruit has. So it's a highly regulated technical part of the farming. And I think, and I also know that like in every other thing Nigeria is involved in, by the time we start this production of Haas and Fuete um, brand of avocado for export, you'll be surprised that our products will even be better than everything out there. Like we already know, pepper from Nigeria is the best, ginger from Nigeria is the best, because we are actually blessed. It will be very, very important if at some point we all decide to do something about farming. I, I have been awed. I've been, I've been in Nairobi for the, the past year, and the things I see, we need to replicate this, because we are actually blessed with so much farmland. You don't, people don't need to invest alone. We can do this together. We can do this as a cooperative because the investment in the park houses are quite high. The level of investment is high, but we can do it together as in a cooperative, as in a union. We can, we can pull the funds together. And I am sure this will become a very big earner of foreign exchange for the country. Like, I'm not sure you know this, but before now, Nairobi's highest Nairobi's Kenya's highest um, income in foreign exchange was tourism. But because of COVID, their highest income is now agricultural exports, the whole country. So I am here this evening to advocate that this should actually happen. Park houses should be built as soon as we have the avocado farms that are in function, that are beginning to fruit we should have pack houses. That's the only way your products can go into the international market. We shouldn't start this by doing any shady corner jobs. Let's just pack it in cartons. No, we have people like um, countries that are in this thing for a long time and they are doing it right. As I speak to you, my company already has buyers. My products have already been bought for the season sold out. I cannot even enter into a contract with any other person. I have buyers that already bought anything I want to export. That is how this business is. And I'm talking from point of view of somebody that's been working in this industry. I will only want to appeal that if we need to do this, we need to do it right. Because if you do not do it right, you cannot compete in this market. We will be working with people who do it professionally, and that's the way to go. Ambassador, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Are you true, Yes, the slides, I don't know if the slides can begin to roll. Yes, yes, you didn't ask me to move it, so that's why I didn't move. <laughs> oh, sorry, please, can you just roll it a bit? Okay, like I was saying, uh, required invest investment that, um, you need a cleaning and washing area, a laboratory inside of the pack house. You need a cooling room because the laboratories, as soon as you're bringing them in, you're supposed to batch them and you're supposed to test them. All these are recorded and kept documents that at times your importers out there, they want to know. You have the sorting and packing line and you have cold rooms, pallets, forklifts. I mean, it's a huge, huge, I mean, each time we're working, we have about 100 people doing three shifts at a go. Please go to the next slide. Next slide. Now, um, quality control. Like I was saying, the international market players are people like Mexico, Peru, and Colombia, California, and New Zealand. 
and the scent produced all over the world. There are criteria, there are standards that cannot but be met. Because if not, what happens is that your products are rejected. So it is the professional arm of this business. Yes, the farmers, they have their farm, they clean it, they make sure the fruit comes right. But for you to export, you need to do it professionally. There are standards to be met. Pack houses are certified, like I was saying, and government regulatory bodies are involved in this. Next slide. I'm so sorry, the other time, I got a call from the grand patron, the former president of uh, Nigeria. He actually wants to join us, but the house is filled up already. We have 100 participants and a lot of people want to join. <laughs> it's great. Okay, next slide. Wow. Yes, please. He's one of the highest investors now uh, in Nasa Avocado in Nigeria. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, yes. Uh, avocado market is growing, like you have said, and for the next 30 years, it's going to continue to be so. Parkhouses certification is required by importers. Parkhouses provide services to farmers and exporters. Parkhouses can connect exporters to importers because the parkhouse becomes the face of the market. The parkhouse is the one that is certified. The parkhouse has buyers. The parkhouse can sell your products because they ensure that what gets out of the country are the required quality and standard of produce. Now, the next slides will be showing what we have on ground. Okay, yes, um, I see that Mohammed is here. Mohammed knows that my brand name is Bon. So I have taken Bon to Nairobi. My products are branded Bon, even in Nairobi. And, um, the trees, like you can see, they are. This is the house avocado. Congratulations to you, Maria. <laughs> Thank you, Mohammed. Um, the the house is the one that has the skin that looks a bit rough, while the fuerte is the one that has the almost the smooth skin. The next slide, sir. Yes, this is where we are busy working and preparing for an export. The people you see are cleaning. This is where they are. These are cartons of- Please kindly, kindly put us through this process for those that don't understand this process. Okay, 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 right. The, what happens is that um, there's a receiving bay where all the avocados that come in. Now, you need to understand that before the avocados get to our factory, we have our people in the farm, our, um, uh, what are they called now? Okay, I can't get the, the we have our people Estimation in the farm. Workers. Yeah, Estimation. I said, who, who go to the farm and are involved with the harvesting mm -hmm. of the products? because we need to be able to do a, a, a prima selection at the farm level. Otherwise they bring everything to the warehouse and at times we don't need them. But in order to keep the farmers happy, we have been able to arrange a situation where we buy all the products, but at different prices. Now, the one that are good for export is at a price and the ones that are not too good for export at, at another price because we eventually give them to factories that are making oil they make oil out of it you know no no part of avocado is thrown away so in order to keep our farmers happy and for them to always be with us we say okay we take everything from you even if we're not going to use everything so when when this when they come to the factory what we do is at the receiving bay there is there is um, a line that washes and disinfects right at the entrance of the factory. We wash and disinfect. We wash and disinfect and take them straight into a cooling area. It's not a cold room yet, because you must understand that you cannot take to a cold room and then bring it out of a cold room. The park house is, is a cold area generally. It has a controlled atmosphere. It cannot be hot, okay? So when they come in, 
we, get, we, we clean them up and we take them through the cooling area into the processing plant. If we go to the next slide, you will see the processing plant. Now, by the time they come up to the processing plant, they are all poured on top of, okay, this is the plant, you can see. It is automated and the, man, the mangoes, now I'm saying mangoes, the avocados are made to come into this line in various weights and sizes. This plant will separate. It is a separation. It is called a sorting line. It will sort them into different sizes. That is why you have the different stations and the people on the stations will pick them up and put them into the boxes on top of them. It is all a line and they move continuously. As each box is finished, it moves to the next section. After this section where they are sorting and putting into the cartons, the cartons is automated to move and go downstairs where the palletting will now start. Please go to the next slide, sir. Now, this is, um, okay, it's not showing where they are pallet, it's already, the pallet is already made. Um, they are put in pallet and they are being gotten ready to go into a container. Now, at this point, if the container is on ground that is moving to the port, we send them straight into cold room containers. They are called reefer containers. They are the containers that ship fruits and, and um, produce like this. If the container is not on ground, we have our own cold rooms where we, we put the ready pallets waiting for the containers to arrive. But most of the time, we like to work with the timing of the containers so that um, the fruit doesn't stay too long on ground. You need to realize that this produce needs to travel maybe between 20 and 30 days. That is why it is important to harvest them freshly. We don't, wait, we don't go and buy from people that have harvested for weeks and probably kept them. We harvest them, we work them. We try to do that within a day or two before we put them into the containers. The next slide, sir. Okay, yes, um, this one, yeah, this is the container. These people you see are official inspection because whenever you're preparing a container, an inspection agent will come to your place to inspect it, ensure that what you're sending out is worthy of being sent out as export. The competition is high. They want to ensure that you're not sending fruit that is not matured. So they come to your factory and they are there inspecting what you're doing, inspecting the fruits and ensuring that the environment is clean. You can see the floor and everywhere there, it's, <laughs> it's all to a specification. Next slide, sir. Okay, yeah, this is the last slide. Um, last year, I think December, my company won um, the best pack house in East Africa. Um, yeah, Matomi, Matomi Hennes is joining us. Uh, that's the organization that gave you this. Okay, yeah, is he German. joining? He's coming in, he's coming in. We're having a lot of <laughs> international practitioners. Nice yes, we're having a lot of international practitioners in the house. You know, great. the great thing I'm happy about is the support we are getting across board, all over the world. We'll be getting a lot of support uh, for us in Nigeria. I know that um, Mr. Matomi will be in any moment from now, and I also great. give him the opportunity to talk. So please hand up your presentation so that uh, we can take some questions because we have some people that are already raising up their hands to ask you one or two questions, they will now go practically to the business of the day. Okay. By way, by way of rounding up, I would like to say that um, avocado business and generally agricultural business for export is actually the way we should go right now as a nation. We have left it behind. I am grateful to people like our grand patron who has always been in this business. He is a man full of wisdom. He saw the light a long time ago. I think we should 
all try to do something about this. We mustn't all be pack house owners. We mustn't all be farmers. I don't own a farm in Nairobi. I just provide this service. And I, I, think, I think it's good. I'm good to go. But in Nigeria, I'm looking forward to owning farms. I would love to do that in Nigeria. I'm already talking to our ambassador here. Um, it's, it's something we should all go into and we, we plan to regret it. It, it, it's not enough. We, we don't have enough of avocados. There are not enough of mangoes and pineapples. There are my, oh, by the way, my, my pack house doesn't only do avocados. We do also mangoes and, and pineapples when they are in season. That's the good part about the pack house. But the farm is the avocado farm. They are a must, a way to go. Thank you for having me, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to go to the chat room and say a very big thank you to Madam Maria Omeago for this great presentation. Like I told you, every month, the last Sunday of every month, we always bring in practitioners across the globe to encourage and talk to us in Nigeria about us avocado. It's the new thing, it's the green gold. We have a lot of crops, you know, our cocoa, our cashew and every of those other things that we do. But the new guy on the blog that is giving a lot of people money across Africa generally is as avocado. And the beautiful thing is it grows in a lot of state in Nigeria. It grows almost everywhere except the corners, you know. So ladies and gentlemen, please let's go to the chat room and say a very big thank you. I want us to appreciate our good presentation. Yes, great one. Madam Miriam, we, we thank you, you know, God bless you. So I'm going to um, give us the opportunity to ask a question why I stopped the, uh, the slide so that we can come back. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mrs. Ekwe A. Ekwe, uh, um, you raise up your hand, you have a question from uh, Madam Miriam. I'm asking you to unmute now. Please, if you have a question for us, please don't unmute yourself if I don't call you. Please, we are in a professional meeting and I want us to be very, very professional about it. Please. Mrs. Ekwe, A. Ekwe. Good. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My question is, how do we, what is the cost of establishing a pack house? Please let's unmute ourselves so that we can now be very good um, mm -hmm. presentation. Okay, uh, sorry for calling you, Mrs. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Ekwe, A. Ekwe. Um, I believe I can drop, um, I will drop with our permission. I will get back to our back end now. And if I have a permission, I can give you a number that you can talk to her. It's, um, it's a part of the business that is a bit capital intensive. And um, you really need to hear from somebody that knows about I don't have the cost of a pack house, but I know we have two approved and standard pack house presently in Nigeria. We have to approve and um, thank you very much. Uh, so you can get in touch with me. I can fa facilitate that, and um, you you'll be able to talk to Madam Mary. So do we have any other questions before we go into the practical step by step, or let me say the agronomy procedure of us avocado uh, in Nigeria? Any other question? Okay, precious Hny, I'm asking you to unmute now. And then after that, I will come to Mucho. Precious HAD, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Ambassador Ambi and then Madam Maria. Thank you so much for this platform. My questions are this um, what certifications does the um, park, Parker House has? Like, because you made mention that the, it has to be certified to meet what standards. So, what certifications does it need to have? Then, secondly, you mentioned that um, 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 for fruit not to 
get ripened before it gets to the consumer. It has to be harvested freshly. And um, you mentioned that it, you wouldn't want it to stay in a cold room for so long. So how, how what um, practices do you implore to avoid a scenario whereby to prevent or reduce the ripening of the food before it gets to the consumer? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, um, madam. Okay, um, madam Miriam, please, that is your question, ma'am. Okay. Um, concerning the kind of certifications a pack house will need, a pack house will need certifications like that which can be given by an export regulatory body. I think in Nigeria, it is, um, what are they called? Export Promotion Council. Yes, would have to give you a certification. Then the way your floor, the material your floor and the, the walls are to be done because they have to be done by um, following the rules of a food uh, processing okay. plant. Yes, because it's not every, every material you can use in a food processing plant. Also, you have to have um, the kind of insecticides you use in the place are not supposed to be the ones that are harmful to food. They need to come in and see how your cleaning processes are, what your cleaning processes are. They need to come in and see. It's more or less, maybe on a higher level, something like what NAVDAC does to food industries. They come in and look at all of these things and they give you a certification. If you are not, if you have not done everything, they keep coming back until you get it right then they give you a certification. And this certification is yearly. It's not a one-time thing and one time goes for all. No, every year they come back and check again that everything is okay. Having said that, you wanted to know how you ensure that the food, the fruit is not overripe by the time it gets there. Now, you need to know that there's a difference between a matured food and a, a, and a ripe food. A matured fruit is not ripe, it is matured. It means that it still needs some time more to ripen. Now, the machines, there are specific machines that you buy, they are handheld, that measures the maturity of a fruit. Now, when you catch your fruit at that moment and you are able to harvest and transport it, they get to where they are going they are not yet ripe because mind you, they are traveling in refrigerated containers. Refrigerated containers that have um, temperature control. You are able to know that the, the, uh, the temperature inside the, the container is stable and static until it gets there. So they can travel easily. You cannot harvest a ripe fruit and say it will get there well, no. You, you harvest matured fruits that by the time they get there and they are taken out of the container, within a week or two, they are getting ripened. I don't know if I've explained myself. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. That's a great one. Um, what, what really happened is we are taking it step by step. Um, why I brought you him um, today is to answer that question that always pop up. Yes, you said we should plan. We are advocating we should plan. Please, Mr. Director, I would like to ask Barry a question. Please, hold on, sir. I will call you, sir. Raise up your hand. So that is why we brought you to actually you know, let Nigerians know that Nigerians are already doing it. And that is why we brought you this evening. We are, the session is going to move in. You know, We are going to go practical. But this is not the first stage. This is the last stage in the value chain because you cannot even export what is not available. But you've been able to put our mind at rest today to show that we have no problem of selling because with people like you, with this knowledge, we can move to the next level. Um, I'm giving the floor to um, Mr. Mucho, you raise up your hand. Then, um, Mr. Muhammad, please, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. After which, I will bring you 
uh, the chairman, the, the CEO of the Kenya Avocado Society, which happens to be my mentor and the person that gave me the mantle for this. It's a great privilege to have him this evening. So after Mr. Moncho and Mr. Mohammed, I will bring him up to just talk to us for one minute, then we we'll go into practical production. Okay, Mr. Moncho, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for your time, and Ms. Miriam. Actually, I'm happy to be here. This is a very new stuff for me. I've been able to acquire um, about 70 acres uh, of land uh, for an 8,000 uh, plantation that I want to embark on. And I want to uh, embark on the probably uh, doing half of that this year. So we're actually sourcing for nurseries right now. I've been in touch with you, so we're still we're still talking. So um, I just want to say the cooperative idea is actually a good idea. I mean, I've always advocated for cooperative. Yet. It's quite, uh, it makes things safer uh, for people investing. So this is something I'd like to uh, talk to Miss Mary about going forward, even if, it, if it's not for the avocado alone, the, the, for other uh, for food processes, uh, because I, I know Ghana is a huge, in that no plane, no plane goes to Ghana and comes back empty handed. They always go back to places like the UK with a um, plane field of mangoes and stuff like that produced. So I really am interested in the cooperative that I, for um, the pack house that Miss Miriam has talked about. So if we can take this offline and have a discussion, I'm more than interested. Um, that's basically all. Uh, I just want to thank, thank you again, Mr. Ambassador. Um, this has actually um, reinforced my uh, my 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 uh, belief in what you're doing, and I hope that we will be going uh, for that to do a whole great thing because I'll be coming very soon, and I hope hopefully we'll probably see you or uh, give you a call and see if there's a possibility to meet up with you and uh, have a conversation offline. Thank you very much. We are always I'm always available. When it has to do with us, avocado, every solution you need, it's available uh, from the certified seedlings to the support in terms of the agronomy processes. It's available. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can talk more about the price because that's the most important thing for me. Okay. Then concerning the um, cooperative, we currently have the Gold Green Farm Cluster. And as I speak to you, we are in the second year of production and the global gap is, is, is um, almost coming up. We are very, very serious about this. We've done a lot of homework. We know what we're doing. Like I keep saying, it's not for everybody because we want a very strong foundation. Um, the global gap, now, as a member of the Avocado Society of Nigeria, every produce, your seedling, once your seedling comes from the right channel, every fruit that comes from your farm, you have an MOU to say we have taken from you because we are selling under one umbrella using the global gap certificate we have. So if it's going to take us five years, 10 years, we want to be the first produce organization that did the right thing in Nigeria because of the caliber of people, of people like you that are stakeholders. So it's, this is for people that are ready to put the name of Nigeria in the avocado production uh, country in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Mohamed, you have the floor. After that, I bring Mr. Matome and uh, we'll go to the practical session for the day. Mr. Mohamed, please unmute yourself. Yes, hello, um, Ambassador. Hello, Maria, and uh, hello, all participants. Um, where, what I'm um, a little bit not sure about is, now, this has avocado. I understand it's grafted for you to get um, a pure, what what you say it's um a, a purebred avocado um, plant now where can we get this purebred avocado plant because i've i've made inquiries and everybody keeps on saying they have it but um when when it starts fruiting you don't see it as a advocate uh, so it has avocado and my second question is how many of these trees will go um um or uh, what size of um, land are you looking at to grow so, grow for something um, uh, grow vi um, commercially viable uh, as avocado, or how many plants to go on on a, uh, a hectare? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, your, the first question, 
uh, certified premium as avocado is available at the Avocado Society of Nigeria. Uh, the department is the, the handle that is the Go Green Africa. Um, you, when you get in touch with me, you get 100% premium as avocado. As I speak to you, we even have nurseries now in Nigeria where we make we do the grafting. And um, currently, we are going to be bringing another set from Mexico and another set from Israel. So if you are getting from anywhere, you know, now this is what we are doing, sensitization, advocacy, and capacity building. But we don't know anybody that is not a member of the family. That's how it works. You can get your avocado anywhere, but you cannot sell or move on our platform. But the sensitization, capacity building, exposure is for every Nigerian. And everybody can always get their input, you know, anywhere they feel they can. But we only deal with premium certified as avocado at the society level. So every person that gets there, you know that you are getting the right thing. Uh, now, concerning numbers per acre, per hectare, that is the session I'm taking in the next two minutes. So I want you to be attentive. I'm going to show you figure by figure. I'm going to show you step by step. Then you will be the one to decide what is um, uh, commercial viable for you. You know, somebody might do 10 hectares, somebody might do one acre, depending on your financial capacity. I will show all those figures in the next two minutes. So I believe just let's hold on and I will undo that. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want us to say a very big thank you. Let's go to the chat room. If you are getting value just right there, yes, I'm getting value. And I want us to go to the chat room and say thank you to Madam Miriam as she, you know, take a seat. Please, let's go to the chat room and do that. We need to appreciate people because they don't have the time. And out of no time, they still come around to do this for us. We need to appreciate. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me um, to have in the house, you know, a great mentor, uh, the pillar of Af As Avocado, you know, campaign in Africa. One of the top guys that have been in the forefront of putting the name of Kenya, you know, out there. Do you know that Kenya is the only African country among the top five? Kenya is the highest exporter of As Avocado in Africa. And this did not start from government alone. This started, the way we are starting, it started from individual that, you know, come us together and begin to advocate and talk about it. Today, I want you to say, to see this man, he's, a, he's an angel in the house avocado industry. You know, he has been there. Now he's going to be dropping the mantle very soon for the young generation to take. I want to bring on, on board Mr. Matomi Ernest, the CEO of the Kenya Avocado Society. Sir, you have the floor. It's a privilege to have you. Thank you so much, Ambassador, and uh, greetings from Nairobi. I'm Dambo, that's what we say here. So my name is Matomi Ernest. I'm delighted to, to join you, and I'm happy with the work that you are doing. The spirit of Ubuntu and Africa we, we want to say that uh, we want to develop Africa avocado orchards so that we can supply to the world and, and make money. So I'm happy to be here and to listen and observe the good work you're doing, Ambassador. I will, you allow me to listen, then later on I can make some closing remarks. So thank you very much. I will listen and then later on I can give my remarks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Okay, I'm moving into um, introduction of As Avocado you know, production in Nigeria. And um, like I told you, we have a lot of international friends on board that will contribute to, to this. Uh, after my presentation, we have my very good uh, friend and brother from Mexico. He has always been a great uh, support. He's always there to support, you know, to also give them um, solution. I want us to mute, mute ourselves so that we can really enjoy. I want to share my, my screen now. I want to share my screen. And um, it is once you, once you have, once you see the slide, please go to the chat room and let me know you, you see my, my slide. Please let me know you see my slide, okay? 
Um, okay, let's just hold on. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm bringing up my slide now so that we can quickly go. I did this because we had a session recently where we, 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 we run the same thing and talked about different crops that are viable in, in Nigeria. Now, today we are talking about, um, um, we are talking about avocado, but let me tell you, there are a lot and a lot of things that are really giving money. Today is, is avocado. Macadamia is there. There are a lot of international recognized and highly sought after crops. You know, gone are the days that it has to be cocoa. We are not even doing, you know, great in cocoa like it used to be. So the new thing is we need to start moving to the next. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm sharing my slide. Uh, if you can see my slide, please go to the chat room and let me know that you can see my slide so that I can move on, please. Can you see my slide? We can see your screen. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Same. Okay. Um, introduction. Because most people we always ask um, avocado, what is us and what is the difference between us and every other, other avocado? What I just want us to know this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is that avocados are commercially viable and cultivated in tropical and Mediterranean climate throughout the world. And in which we 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 our country is. So they are they are green skin, flesh body that that most time we call them uh, pear. And um, the local one we have here, foete and and reed and the rest are really not things we take off of like every other part of Africa, because we really don't really understand the nutritious value and um, the health benefit that it it has. It has a lot. Now. Um, most time it does not rip in. You have to, you have to, especially us, us has its own peculiarity, which makes him stand out out of every of, of, of this uh, plant. So us, us is the most common cultivar, or uh, let me say species of avocado. It produces fruit year round, and it accounts presently for 80% of the cultivated avocados across the world. You know, and what makes us special? You know, us has a medium size of 150 to 250 gram oval fruit with a black pebble skin. A kind of rough, rough skin, not the smooth skin uh, avocado that we have in the village and the, in our compound. The flesh is a not, it has a nutty and a rich flavor with 90% uh, um, oil. Now, one thing that is so, so crucial that we should know as an ass farmer is that the name ass was actually painted by uh, the number one man that planted the tree. The man is called Rudolf Ass. Ash tree is a descendant from a single mother tree raised by a male carrier named Rudolf Ash of Lad Abra Heights in California. And he patented as, you know, in 1935, the mother tree of a certain uh, um, subspecies died of a root rot and was caused down in September 2002. Now, as they start spreading across, start moving across the board, you know, people getting in the part of the cultivar, when your fruit is about to, when your tree is about to fruit, is bringing a flower, you cut what we call the zion of the board, then you graft it with your nursery of a different um, variety of avocado, which you say, um, you call the mother plant, or you say the rootstock. Now, recently there has been a rising demand for the organic crop, and uh, that is what we take from the one in, in the Nigeria Avocado Society that as we are going out, you know, campaigning, talking about this, we want to teach people about organic production of house avocado because it's like baby, whatever I teach you, teach to baby, that is what they will also, you know, go up with. Because as avocado is not a thing in Nigeria until two, three years ago when we started pushing it. So we started pushing organic production because we know what it takes to be able to you know, play in the international market. And being a country of huge population, huge resources and everything, we know that if we do the right thing, there's possibility of us playing you know, massively in the, international market, in the international market in five years is there. So we said we need to start 
teaching people the right thing to do. Don't even teach them about, hey, yes, there's a particular chemical you can use. There's a particular fertilizer you can use. Yes, there are. But we said we want to go organic. So this evening, I want to talk to you about you know, organic you know, production. The demand for organic as avocado has increased over a period of time. It, a lot of people, I have farmers that now say, no, bye-bye to cassava, bye-bye to maize. I want to do ours. I don't have money. I just want to do 10 or 20. Yes, they, because they know that in a period of three years, these fruit, these trees will give fruit that is of international demand. Although there are over 40 avocado variety, as avocado, you know, is the most preferred, you know, internationally. The fruit is in high demand across the globe. The fruit is in high demand across the globe. And uh, in markets such as UK, Spain, the Middle East, Russia, China came on board recently and they have a very lovely, you know, um, MOU with, with Kenya, which I know maybe Mr. Matome can also put uh, something to that, whereby they, they start taking, you know, the, 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 the flesh, the flesh, the processed flesh from Kenya and it's a multi-billion, you know, Naira uh, package. And then all of that, Dubai, uh, Middle East, Dubai to be precise, it, we have two MOUs from Dubai already to uptake uh, from us. So ladies and gentlemen, farming as avocado organically start with proper seedling, like uh, Mr. Mohammed said the other time. The seedling, which is the input, determines the output. The moment you get it wrong from the seedling stage, you are wasting your money because it's going to take three years before you know what you're planting. So I'm telling you, please, Try and make, join, you know, become a member of the Avocado Society of Nigeria. Just all you have to do is go to the www.avocadosnigeria.com and register. You will be able to assess, you'll be able to assess the seedling. Currently, we, the seedling is at, a, a, you know, a discounted rate and it's, it's always available to members at, at a discounted rate. So I want to quickly move. What does it really require for effective soil management um, or the, the required soil, you just need uh, a soil that is in the medium range of 5.5 .5 to 6.5 uh, pH for your avocado. And it thrives very well in a well-drained in a well-drained soil. It thrives very well in a well-drained soil. You cannot plant as avocado in a waterlogged farm, no. Poorly drained soil support growth of, of fungi, which calls what root rot. So yes, the land that will be okay for your plantain, that your land beside the stream is not okay for your avocado. It's not okay for your avocado. So avocado needs a well-drained soil. And at the initial stage, what do you need? I tell people, you just need any of this animal, you know, manure that is cured. That is cured. Your pit, when you get your seedlings, when you get your seedling, you need to dig a pit of two, two feet by two feet, deep and, and the, 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 the width and make sure you do that a week minimum of a week before the time you plant. Why we are doing this is we are preparing for March, April because most people currently what we do is we are using what we call the rain fair. Avocado requires a lot of water. If you don't have the plan to have irrigation in your farm, avocado is not for you. You can go for plantain for any other thing. That is why I keep saying it's not for everybody. It's agribusiness. The business of the agriculture is not agriculture. The business of agriculture is understanding the input versus the output, understanding everything it entails before you go for it. So if you are coming into avocado production, make sure that you have a plan to have alternative source of water and irrigation for your farm. Let, let's proceed. So when you dig your plant, uh, your hole, what, what we work with, we work with a standard from Kenya, which is five meter by five meter, the same thing from our uh, team from Mexico, five meter by five meter. And the, the, I hope you can still see my slide. I hope I'm not talking to myself. Can you, are you, am I communicating? Am I, are you, are you getting value? Are you getting value? Are you getting value? Please come to chat room, let me know. I hope I'm not speaking to myself. Okay. Am I making sense? Are you getting value? Yes, yes, okay, excellent, excellent, let's proceed. Now, if you look at the, 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 the screen, if you look at my screen, there's what I, I said, main variety and the pollinizer. Now, this is something you need to understand. 
as avocado on itself, you know, you also need the fuerte variety in between your plantation for pollination. Five meter by five meter will give you around 150, 160 trees per acre, depending on your location in Nigeria, because the size of land or the way we measure land in the western part, the southwest, <clears throat> is different from the way land is being measured in the southeast. So when I'm doing my presentation, I always say between 150 and 160, depending on the size of your land that makes an hectare. But we all know that an acre is 4,000 square meter, an hectare is 10,000 square meter. So you can use that to divide five meter by five meter and look at what it's going to give you. Now, this is how it goes on the feed. You need to cross plant with the pollinizer. You need to cross plant with the pollinizer. I don't want to bore you with terms and terminology that will look so big, but as you become a member, as we grow together, you know, as we move together in our trainings and, and programs, you begin to understand all these things so that I don't waste our time. Um, okay. Planting all 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter should be done. The topsoil should be mixed with enough cured manure to improve the point for soil, soil fertility. Like I told you the other time, for me, I use rabbit waste. I use rabbit waste and poultry manure. If you come to the center, to the nursery, we have over 2,000 poultry manure already cured already. So when, because we do practical training for farm, we do farm setup. The only thing we don't do is farm management. We do from land clearing, land preparation, farm setup. We do everything. We also do training. We train you on how to do this practically, but at a fee as, as a member, as a discounted fee as a member. So when you dig this pit, I said, make sure that it's minimum of a week before you plant. You miss the topsoil. When you are digging, you take the topsoil to a side and the subsoil to a side. The most capital um, intensive part of the business is the land preparation. Currently, yes, the seedlings is around 3,000 per one, which you know we are still believing that as we go on, we get support from government and so, so that this can come down. But we've been trying this for two years, so we can't wait. That's why we keep pushing uh, uh, you know, at, at our level. Now, digging, you have to really, really be, be serious with that. Make sure you do the right thing, mix the topsoil, with the manure and cover back the hole. Pour minimum of 20 liters of water and allow it for the next one or two weeks before you transplant your seedling. Now, you don't plant as avocado the way you plant plantain, the way you plant other things. You don't dig you know, the hole and put the whole um, uh, root into uh, the whole pack in, into, into the, the soil. You need, when you cut the seedling nylon, the, the, the park nylon, you just need to make sure that the roots does not get deep into the hole, is floating in between the, the pits you dug so that you know it doesn't get rot easily. After planting the young tree, there uh, should be water and mulch. So mulching film, depending on who you are and the capital you are bringing on board, you can use many things to mulch. You can use the grass to mulch. You can use you know, shade nets to mulch. You can use your mulching film to mulch. Using organic fertilizer, you know, inorganic fertilizer kill microorganisms in the soil due to the acidity and degrades the water retention rate in the soil. So that's why we don't even talk about it at all. We don't talk about it at all. But you can also do your farm inorganically. But at the social level, we train people to go organically because we know the moment we take that as a practice, it will be part and parcel of us. To minimize water loss, you know, through evaporation, you mulch your field with young grass, you know, with dry leaves. Now we have um, cover crops that you can also plant on the field. There are a lot of cover crops that you can plant on the field. Another crucial thing is um, biological uh, pest control is also what we train. So we teach, you know, you don't just start spraying any, because this, we are growing for export. So from day one, it's like a child that is going to primary school is your child. You know that this child, you want the best for this child. So you put the child through the best training. So as he's moving from his daycare to nursery to primary, secondary, you already have a plan for, 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 for his or her life. That is the same thing we're doing. We have a plan for our fruit. 
every of the fruit that drops in Nigeria must bring value, monetary value, nutritional value, you know, value anyway. Nothing must get waste. So since they feed in the morning and late in the evening, especially the white fly, mosquitoes and white flies, they come on the young tree. You know, they come on the young leaf very, very, so almost all the time they are there. So the best thing you can do is make sure that the sanitation of your farm is top notch. Make sure that your farm is neat. If you come to the I um, to the Go Green uh, Avocado Cluster in Abekuta Ogun State, we sweep the farm. We have women that sweep the farm with broom, so that we don't want any form of death. You know that we now abhor you know white flies and the rest. By the time your farm begins to to fruit, please make sure you have what we call proper sanitation. Please. So that all the falling fruits, you know, those ones that are dropping, make sure you have somebody that picking them. Don't let them rot on the farm, please. By the time we are getting to that level, don't let them rot on the farm because they breed a lot of white flies and magic. Alternative also such as guava should not be planted around your farm, please. Guava should not be planted around your farm. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not only about us, but you can make a lot of money, you know, having beehives in your farm. Rearing bees in the farm, you know, is a profitable venture on its own. But rearing bee in a, an avocado farm or near avocado farm, it's of high importance because, hey, it improves pollination, hence increase the overall yield of your farm. We have beehives strategically placed in the farm. You see, you see the farm, you look at the, 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 the whole environment, you are really happy because everything is working the way it should. So when you are coming into this, for those of you that will be going commercial, also have it at the back of your mind that you need the bees, beehives in the farm, introduce the bees in the farm. As you are making money uh, from, from, from the bees, you are, they are also helping you to increase the overall yield of your, of your farm. Risk management now. What is important? Uh, why is it important to buy a avocado seedling from a certified nursery? And I really appreciate um, um, uh, Mr. Mohammed for that question the other time. It is quite disappointing to buy poor quality seedling only for, for you to now see them underperform or after three years, you now discover that it's not what you pay for that you get. So I, I put some things, I say risk management. Varietal quality and purity are strictly monitored to facilitate only the production of the best variety. That is why you can see us flying seedlings into the country. That is who fly seedlings into the country. Recently, I was speaking with, with the top boss, you know, in, in one of the organization or the parastata that needs to help us get certification. I was in Abuja. I, I flew from Abelkuta to Abuja in preparing for our next batch that is coming from Mexico. It is not easy. So make sure you get certified seedling. It will enable you as a farmer to have confidence in what you have on your farm. Number two reason why you need to go for a certified seedling is that it's an access to new opportunity. Purchasing the certified seedlings offers recognized proof of the variety of the avocado you have. Hence, as a farmer, you can assess premium market with confidence. When you don't have the right thing, you can assess market. You can assess market. And the third one is the, the new genetics. Certified seedlings are resistant to most pests that affect, you know, the, the ordinary uh, avocado. Most pests, you know, that affect them and it tolerates ash climate condition. It tolerates ash, ash climate condition. I believe I'm making sense, ladies and gentlemen. I, um, am I making sense? Are you getting value? Okay, you're getting value. Excellent. So I, I'm touching all this part. Why I'm touching all this part is I don't just want to come and say, good, 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 good. There are things that you need to know so that you then say, oh, production is not for me. I will go to processing. Oh, processing is not for me. It's not everybody that can afford a pack house. We are talking about things that will run into hundreds, if not billions, hundreds of, of millions. You understand? There are a lot of opportunity across the avocado value chain. So that is why we are doing this sensitization and this advocacy thing. So that each and every one of us can begin to look at where we can play and play big. But the overall thing is operation minimum of one avocado per Nigerian, per household in Nigeria. That is the campaign. 
and we want you to please support us using any of your available platform resources and anything you know to support us in this campaign you know minimum of one as avocado per household in nigeria now controlling of pests and diseases prevention i will tell you for me i believe prevention is the most economical and effective way to control pests if your farm is clean and neat you won't really have a lot of issues but let's talk about things that affect avocado so that i give you solutions about them then you can prepare controlling pests and disease can help in maintaining high quality and quantity of food you know enhancing the product productivity of the food uh, in the farm this method include supplying enough nutrients to your plant at the required time what nutrient are we talking about now organic manual any certified organic nutrient. Let me repeat that again. Any certified organic nutrient, because the traceability, the traceability is crucial. Where this is coming from is crucial. We are a very organized association. So if you are using a particular product, make sure that it's satisfied, certified. Make sure you have the certificate. We now have companies in Nigeria that produce certified, you know, nutrient, organic nutrient. Make sure you have a copy of their certificate because by the time we need to, you know, ask you, you should be able to show this because that is when you will be able to fly under the umbrella of the association. You know, some major pests that attack as avocado include trips, scale insect, first, you know, first codling mold. So, and, and I want to say avocado is also susceptible to fungi, you know, foodstuffs, carb, rot. Rot is common in areas with protein. If you go and plant um, your avocado, you know, in the water retained uh, environment like um, aqua, Yorubas, we say aqua, where is, the roots will rot. Please don't do that. So farmers, you ensure that the soil are well aerated and well drained, and it can prevent by planting, you know, grafted seedlings. Please don't just go and buy seedling and plant. I will show you grafted seedling now. I will show you things you need to look out for when you are buying seedlings. Things you need to look out for, how it, it, it looks. So the moment you have that picture, now nobody can just bring any other thing to you and say, this is um, as avocado. Are you getting me now? So let me, this the disease that can be called, most of the disease we have, you know, fungi. Um, I put it here that um, grafted seedlings are resistant to phytophag fungi, and in severe cases, it can be controlled with fungicides such as with the milk. And this disease can be controlled using copper-based fungicide with high macrozeb content. You know, acratos mainly attack the mature fruit, you know, forming brown patches and dots, you know, on, 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 your, on, your, on your fruit. Then uh, capusora mainly attack the fruit and leaves leaving yellow spots across the leaf. Scab attack the fruit too. Uh, uh, he attack the he attack the leaves and the figs and the twigs. Sorry. So, but all these things, there are solution. Uh, there are solution for them. So, no. Now, let's talk about. Let's talk about. Um, uh, before I go to this figure, okay. Let me show you this. Yes. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Can you see this image? Can you see this picture? Can you see the picture? Please. Can you see the picture? Go to the chat room and communicate with me. Yes. Can you see if can if you are looking at my console now? Can you see this part? You see this part that I'm rolling? This part. What is there? Can somebody type what you saw there? Can you see a V shape, a kind of the upper part, the Zion being you know connected to the rootstock? Can you see the V shape kind of a thing? Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, excellent! I love this class. I love this class. Now, if you are buying any seedling and this is you can't find something like this then please that is not grafted seedling as of today i don't think uh, anybody is doing that except the, the except go green africa uh they are not showing not our not showing abekota you understand i don't know of any but if there's any you are permitted to get from them but make sure you have you, you know what you're doing so look at this anytime you are buying please make sure this is what you look for and i believe that um Nobody is doing Ojoro yet to go and graft uh, <laughs> rubbish plus rubbish. So please always look out for this. Let's proceed. Let's proceed to what most people want to hear. I'm about to round up now. I'm rounding up now because I don't want to take our time. Look at the screen. Look at the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the screen. 
what you see on the screen now has actually said everything about Ash Avocado. Has said everything about Ash Avocado. That is, um, I will say, um, let me write as uh, avocado avocado projection pro, or let me say cost analysis so let me just say projection uh, there's a financial projection let me take this away and say and say as avocado financial projection projection this is where we are going to end this presentation and i will open the floor for question and uh, i will answer uh, your questions can you see this can you see this okay let's take it one after the other can you see that can you see that this is what most people have been waiting for <laughs> this is what they are waiting for okay okay ladies and gentlemen duration how many years will it take before my house avocado begin to fruit three years what is the planting space? Five meter by five meter. What is the planting population per acre? Now, as avocado financial production per, let me come back here, per, per acre. Let's do that per acre. Mm -hmm. Per acre. These are for, this is actually for those that want to go uh, commercial. Yes. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Am I making sense, somebody? Am I making sense? Okay. I'm going to give open the floor now. I'm rounding up by 9.30, I'm true. Then I can take the picture. So, planting population 153 per acre at the space of 5 meter by 5 meter. Cost of seedling 3,000 naira per one. Yield per acre, minimum of 200 fruits, multiplied by 150 trees. And currently in Nigeria, we pick a very ridiculous price just for the projection sake. A very ridiculous price of 50 naira. And I will ask the question, or we'll go to the chat room. For those of you that have eaten avocado this week, how much did you buy the local avocado you bought? How much? Local avocado you bought from the market in your area, from the supermarket, how much did you buy it? For the projection sake, we put it at a very ridiculous price of 50 naira. The meaning of this is 200 fruits multiplied by 153 on an acre multiplied by 50 naira. You are looking at around 1.5 million the first in three years. And you know, cash crops are like wine. The older they are, the more they give. The older your, your tree, the more fruits you get. Let me shock you. You can invest up to 800 or 1,000 fruit on a an, an, an tree of as avocado. But we use this as a projection base for you to look at. Does it make sense? Is this something I like? Does it really, is it going to work for me? Yes, I like it. Yes, I don't like it. Then you can move to another. When to plant? When to plant? Between April and May. Some people can start planting by March, depending on the location, because we have some part that have you know early rain but as we speak now this is the time that you should be doing what we call land preparation this is not the time to be buying land it's almost going because yes you want to buy land you are still negotiating price no january is gone already we are entering into february and between, before you know it you need to do your land clearing a lot of people have done their land clearing as i speak to you they are currently doing what we call land preparation your first plowing getting the farm in shape you know, some people will start digging by first week of March. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to the end of this uh, sensitization and, and capacity building this evening. I hope you all got value. I hope you all got value. I want to stop the screen so that can, we can see ourselves. I'm ready to take your questions so that we can also bring some of our guests to also give us support and we call it a day. Did you get value? Did you get value? Did you get value? Did you get value? <laughs> somebody say 500 naira, somebody say 100 naira, but we, we are using 15 naira for the projection. But by the time most of our fruits are ready, none of them can go for that price. They are very is a great. So, okay, I'm going to start again from Mr. Macho. Um, Mr. Macho, please, if you have questions, just press 
There's a place where you can raise up your hand. So I will ask you to unmute yourself. You ask the question, you mute yourself, I answer. You ask, let us be very, very fast because we have 100 people in this meeting. And I'm really happy that you know you, you waited and you, you got value the, this evening. By the grace of God, Feb, by February, the last Sunday in February, we're also going to be having another training. That's what we do at the Avocado Society of Nigeria and in partnership with Google in Africa Initiative. The floor is yours, Mr. Mucho. Please un unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, while we are waiting for that, I have some questions in the chat room. Our friends from Mali is saying, do we have partners in Mali? Um, we don't have partners in Mali, but there are a lot of things we can do together. If you can just get in touch with me. Uh, my name is Ambassador Adeni Ishalabumi. If you have my number, um, I'm going to drop my number in the chat room. Uh, we'll drop my number and my name in the chat room, Ambassador Adeni Ishalabumi. Um, the CEO of the Avocado Society of Nigeria and um, the convener of the Go Green Africa Initiative the convener of the Go Green Africa Initiative. So if you get in touch with me, there are a lot of things we can pull across Africa. It is Africa, in Africa, that we are pushing. We need to help ourselves and move to the next level, you know, across. The so my name is Adeni Ishola Bumi, and um, my number is um, plus 234-8065-22074. Anything you need, anything you need from purchasing of land, so land clearing, supply of seedling, planting, get in touch with me, you get a solution. The only thing we don't do, I don't do, I don't do farm management because I have a lot of portfolios, a lot of projects that I handle across Africa. That is my number, 6080065220074. Um, it's also on WhatsApp. So Mali, we'll get in touch, then we can do something. Okay, Mr. Musho, you have the floor. After you precious a chairman, after that in Inaya, Inenaya, please. Let's go on. So basically, I, uh, I think that was the, the first time that I raised my hand. So I um, don't really have any questions regarding, uh, except we can freely talk about uh, the prices because I'm willing to you know, acquire about 5,000 nurseries, but at that price, you know, of uh, 3,000. Uh, so, so yeah, that's you, the price. You that's, are the comfortable. price. that's the price currently. And um, if you need um, any form of um, discount or support, we can always talk back in anytime you're ready. Because okay. that is the official. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. All right. No worries. No problem. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Precious, um, a Chinese, a Chinese, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, oh, sir. I have some questions to ask. Okay. Um, first of all, is there a certified pack house in Nigeria? That's my first question. The secondly, like, what's the estimated cost to prepare the land for planting? Because you said that's the most um, capital intensive part of the avocado farming, like estimated cost. Let's use an acre, for example. Then you um, in planting the avocados in spacing, you made mention of a pollinizer. What's the, the pollinizer? Is it a special of avocado? Yes, it's the local, it's the local also, variety. It's a foyte variety. Okay, the local variety. Yes. Uh, Just all right, okay, them. that's fine. Then also, um, you talked about you don't do farm management. So what practices can a farmer or can we employ to manage the farm when it comes to farm management? Yeah, and as a lastly, member as a member of the Avocado Society of Nigeria, there is a handbook. There is a green, we call it the green Bible, kind of. There's a handbook that entails everything deeper than what we share this evening. And again, we can also train, you can also send your farmers for training on how to management. Management is not really that much. It's just giving um, eyes into details, make you sure that the farm is clean, is neat. They are getting water as at when they, it's, it's a crop, it's a cash crop, you know? So cash crop is not like vegetable. You don't really need too much details like that. You understand? So don't, don't be, it's not something that is going to be hard, you understand? Okay. So, and lastly, um, when it comes to um, the commercial farming of avocado for export purpose, like, um, how was what's the estimated cost of selling the avocados for export purpose as on the commercial scale? Because I remember Madam Mary had talked about um, farmers who farm the avocados, they send the mature 
um, fruit to the park house. So I would just like to have an estimate of that. To ask did, you, Thank did, you. You, did you see my slide? I have already shared with you um, the projected um, price at the local level. Now, we oh, don't have park house that is doing that. We are not doing any avocado in Nigeria in terms of export yet as avocado, no. Our trees are just two years already flowering, some already, you know, fruiting. At two years, some that are fruiting, you are supposed to pluck them off. You understand? It's like 11 years old baby trying to get pregnant. Is it that she kills herself or the pregnancy will kill her? So you need to pluck them off at two years so that they can branch out and prepare for third year. Now, the projected price is the local price for production. Now, by the time we will say, for example, let me give you this. We can't start exporting using park house at the initial level in Nigeria, even in the next four years, I'm telling you. Even in the next five years, except we have a lot of people coming into the production. I, I told you the former president is the highest stakeholder as we speak today. Is the highest stakeholder as we speak today. So the volume that will go into the processing using park house, we don't have it yet. Now, there is a semi way of processing which is the way we are going to adopt to, and we are going to be sending out by freight, by air freight. We already, like I told you, we have MOU for that. We have people ready to buy that. Now, projected price is for production purpose. By the time the fruit is out, then the prevailing market international price is what we will be talking about, which I cannot tell you now because we don't even have it. So you can't be pricing what you don't have yet. The best thing is if you are coming to production, use the evaluation we show you, that we just, the price we show you, use it for your calculation. If it is okay, then you can proceed. I hope I, I make sense. I, I believe I've been able to, to answer you. Then concerning the cost of land preparation, it depends on your, on, on, on your location. Down here in the West, um, around for land clearing, Mostly for big projects, we say you need to clear the land mechanically. And if you are you are doing a small project, you can clear your land manually. And when you clear the land manually, you make sure that you distump, you remove all the stumps in the feed, because by the time you start laying irrigation, and these plants are supposed to be on a straight line, that is why we do what we call farm layout. So production entails a lot of things, but not too hard to achieve. Are you getting it? Not too hard to achieve. Make sure you, you're clearing land clearing per acre around the, I think it's around 30,000 for manual. If you are cleaning an acre, after clearing, you know, people will pack them together, burn the bushes, then you need to do land, you need to plow. But if you are not even plowing, you can plant. Just make sure you have a clean and beautiful field. I, I believe I've been able to answer your question so that we can just keep moving. And um, if you see have any other one, please just write it. Uh, uh, in the chat room. Good presentation. An alternative for pollination is having beehives in the orchard. Yes, we talked about that. What is talking about the pollinator is the, 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 the type A is, is type A and type B. Maybe that is the next session. So always be available for our sessions. We can You can learn everything in a day. You can learn everything in a day. So we keep training. That's what we call type A, type B in the production. And now I just share with us how you intermarry them. Um, I'm asking Mr. Ineya or Mrs. Ineya to uh, unmute him or herself so that I can take you there. Mr. Michael Amushon, Ashley, Eze John Bosco, and uh, I think with that we can hand it off for the day. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. So I have a question. When you were doing the presentation, you made mention of that we shouldn't plant gova around the farm. So I'm asking, can we plant our uh, plantain? And which other crop can we intercrop with it that will be safe to stay around it? To say some crops are not safe because of pest infestation and all that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, you, you, I don't even encourage crop plus crop. Um, if you are having... Um, uh, as avocado, I will say the only thing we approve at the Avocado Society of Nigeria and we train people is legumes. Is legumes. You can do your soya beans, you can do your beans, just do legumes. Um, 
things that can cover the crops, um, the cover the floor. Don't do crops within the crop farm, don't, so that they don't start, you know, um, attacking themselves for nitrogen, um, for nitrogen. So please don't do any crop uh, in, in your avocado farm. Just go for legumes, sunflowers, uh, every of those things that can even help give the 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 the, the, the farm more nitrogen. These are the things you should do. Mr. Michael Amushon, please, you have the floor. Okay, while we're waiting for him, Mr. Ashley. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Um, can you hear me, sir? Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Oh. Thank you, Don. I so much appreciate you um, for the good work you are doing. Let me start by, by you know, thanking you and thanking you and thanking you. Um, I'm sure you cannot remember my face again, but then I will briefly introduce myself. I thank you once again because I happen to be part of the second set of people that enjoy your three months training free of charge. You know, back then in 2018, you know, I even came up with a calm meal. You know, if you remember now, we come meal going to processing and all that, talking about potato, plantain, you know, uh, pineapple, and you. Uh, I so much appreciate you. God bless you, sir, for the good work you are, you are doing. I gave some people your number, you know, um, call you for business and stuff like that. But having said that, um, after the training, um, I left the shore of Nigeria, but then I cannot but follow you, you know, during your birthday and everything. I witnessed everything online. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Uh, to my question, um, how can the people in the diaspora actually participate and invest in this? I have whatever you are doing, anything you are doing, I have absolute confidence in it because I've uh, been with you one-on-one, -on -one. you have mentored us, you have trained us, you have showed us so many things, and I cannot but just follow you. How can people in diaspora participate in all this? Okay, I will answer that, please. Um, before I take that uh, answer, let me quickly bring in, ah, uh, wow, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me bring in Mr. Matomi. Um, I think he's two hours ahead of us, please. Hello, sir. Mr. Matoni, you have the floor. Mr. Ernest Matoni, you have the floor, please. Please don't go. You need to say hello to your people. And this is why I love my people in Nigeria. Um, we don't finish things. We start. We are now from 100. We are 78. And most of the things we will discuss now, some people will still come back and ask you the same thing. <laughs> Mr. Matoni, please, where are you, please? I hope you are seen in this meeting. Wow. Mr. Hennes, where are you? Wow, 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 wow. I think he left. Wow. Okay. Uh, he is the CEO of the Avocados um, uh, Society of Kenya. They've been giving us a lot of support. And um, I also have a very good friend from Mexico here. So let me quickly answer you, sir. 70% of the people in the Avocado Society of Nigeria are people in diaspora. I will tell you, it's those of you in diaspora that actually understand the financial, economic, and the nutritional value of avocado. It's not our food here. But most of you, there are a lot of you that cannot even sleep without taking the avocado shake. The, um, my registrar in the uh, Institute of Agribusiness will always tell me, I have my avocado shake, I have my avocado shake. You know, most of you will take your avocado salad. Well, so most of you will take guacamole, um, and the rest. Uh, so when we started, the first set of support we had was from people in that world. Wow, the first thing we were after is, can this grow in Nigeria? Can it grow in Nigeria? And fortunately, it's doing very well, very, very well. So for those of you in diaspora, there are a lot of ways you can come. You can partner with a system firm. You can invest. For me, I really don't do investment. I've been around in the industry for 15 years. I don't do investment, all these being there, 
uh, take 20% and that I don't do, I do big, as I, I, we do investment, but we do big chunk and it's not 20% because we can't give that. So you can do that, you can invest. Then you can even start with what we call land banking. I like talking to people in diaspora. It will get to a stage that most of you in diaspora will want to get land in Nigeria and you'll be buying from Indians. I'm telling you, you want to get land in your fatherland and you'll be buying land from Indians or if for from China, Chinese, Chinese, because the rate at which these guys are bringing in money, you know, this is a fund that is coming as a single digit, you know, uh, this thing, and they are buying a lot of land everywhere. You go into the bush, you see very big, hundreds of hectares, thousands of things they are buying. So if you know you don't have the time, there's nobody, you know, uh, that is ready to do that for you now, do land banking. Buy some, look at where we have, uh, go green. Look at where we had that train in that time. The value of that land today is a lot. We have 600 and something there. Today, I only have left 10 hectares. And Mrs. Uh, Miriam is talking to me about that 10 hectares as we speak. You understand? So please, I'm begging you, brothers and sisters, daddies and mommy in diaspora, as much as we have a lot of problem in Nigeria, we still have great people you can talk to. You might not really need to plant anything yet. Buy land. Buy land because the land, the city today used to be a village. Please, buy land. God bless you. Ash, Mr. Ashley, uh, yeah. Mr. Ashley, please, you have the floor. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I I have just two questions to ask. I was thinking, although part of the question has been answered, I wanted to know if uh, I can invest in the house agricultural house uh, avocado plantation through the cooperative. If there's a cooperative that has like we, an investment, uh, yes, we have a cooperative. Can invest. We have a cooperative, but what we did with that is cluster, cluster farming. Uh, we got a place beside a very big water and um, we bought and we cut into sizes. Some people have just one plot with, with 25 avocado seedlings. Is this still people, available? No, it's not. You know, it's not. But as, as time goes on, you see the challenge, sir. Let me tell you something, sir. The challenge we have in, in Nigeria, especially in this sector, is support of farm hand. We really don't have a lot of farm hands. There is, I don't think there is a Yoruba boy. Likely that you will see a Yoruba boy where you bought a land that is ready to work on the farm. No. So the farmers, the farmers that are coming from Togo and Kotono, they are no more coming because even their currency is at par with Naira already. So it doesn't make sense coming to Nigeria to come and struggle. So it's becoming so hard. And that is why, you see, I used to play in the annual crops. Like he mentioned, pineapple, plantain, I've done a lot. And I said, it's time to go to cash crop because it gives peace of mind. So it's not easy to say, I can open up a very big cluster, but opening up is not a problem. Setting it up is not a problem. Managing it is the problem, sir. So by the time we bring you bring your money, maybe one million, two million, and we pull everything together and we set it up and we can't manage it, then that money will just go down the drain. So that is the problem we have. As we speak now, the cooperative is just purely into everybody owns their own small portion. We don't have any investment kind of a thing. The type of investment I do majorly is and to invest in, in different projects we do at 50% per annum. And it's not too attractive. So we don't announce it. It's just be, be you know within our circle of influence because that is what is acceptable as, and also sustainable for agriculture. So as time goes on, please let's keep in touch. So if that's anything it. So we can always I, Sorry, my second question. My second question. So if I want to partnership with the cooperative, that's the type window. Of, that's the only investment window, window I can open. I can go through. There's no investment window now except 
the window I'm telling you about 15% is not even the computer. What, what, what I'm trying to say, like that, what you just said now, can I, can I partner through with the cooperative with the 15%? Is, that's uh, what I'm saying. Uh, that's, just, uh, that's what I'm saying. It's not even the cooperative. It is me as a person. It is my own project, my own oh. company as a person. Go Green Africa. Yes. So you can partner. Oh. We can talk about okay. that. You know, back end. I, 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 how can I get uh, like a link? Are you going to post the link? I drop my phone the, number uh, and my name, sir. Ambassador. We've been you should write it on the chat. You, you mentioned I, you called it out, but we, we hey, didn't I wrote get it. it. I didn't get okay, it. now I'm I'm writing it again, sir. I'm writing it again, sir. Even if you just type ambassador, then you should have me on your Google. Um, you will see see what we've been able to do. Um, okay. Can I explain the one? Sir, I'm typing it, sir. I'm doing that now so that um, Mr. AJ Bosco, please you can please okay. unmute, unmute yourself. Is it John Bosco? Please unmute yourself. You have the floor. Thank you, sir. I must commend you for this is for your pleasure. Um, my network and questions have been answered, but I want to ask um, I'm based in Port Harcourt. Is there any geographical area? Can you hear me? Port Harcourt is. Mm -hmm. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay. Port is a very good okay. for avocado. Port Harcourt is okay. down to Bini. Bini, Edo State okay. is the number one because we've been able to do what we call soil analysis. We've done a lot, a lot okay. of job. Bini, Edo State, the red soil is over superb. We've done set up in LMA. LMA, we have a, okay. a partner. Okay. A, a member that has a family in it. Portacourt soil is awesome. Okay. Couple with the fact that the all south south, you have a lot of rain. You have a lot of rain. So it's a very good place. It's a very good place. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I really want to thank you for this um, time out because you took your time from eight o'clock till this time uh, to learn. Please, we are going to have the session again um the last sunday of the month of february where we'll be talking about another thing what we do majorly at the go green africa initiative is to build the knowledge and the information the information and the knowledge gap that exists in the agribusiness sector across africa the major problem we have is information gap knowledge gap and that is what we do in go green africa we seek knowledge we practice it we know it's okay we come out here and we share with you 100 percent free I don't do paid training. I do free training as much as Nigerians don't appreciate anything free. This is a calling. Until when we pack our load and also, you know, go out like every other person, we are doing our bit by exposing Nigerians to opportunities, you know, giving them the right information, building their capacity, and um, making sure that we all grow together through the green economy. I really appreciate your presence. When next we share our, our, our link, please make sure that uh, you, you share it with your friends and family. I don't know if you are on Telegram. I have a training center on Telegram called the Go Green Africa with a capacity of over 10,000 members. I want to drop the link in the chat room for those of you that still want to follow me on our day-to-day -day activity um, as, um, as a person you want to follow me, you want to learn even beyond uh, what we are talking about today, beyond what we are talking about today on Telegram. Um, I want to share the link with you now so that just click on the link, you join us. We do training every week on different things, cross vegetables, we talk about solutions, we give platform for people to ask questions and then um, we make sure we answer uh, these questions all, all, all the time. So if you want to do, if you want to do anything in agribusiness, you want to buy land somewhere, you want us to make some inquiries for you and, uh, and, act, and so that you can do what you want to do. This is the best platform to belong to. We choose Telegram because 
Telegram is for mature minds where we can control our conversations. So I'm dropping the link now. So if you're on Telegram, please, you can join Go Green Africa Initiative. Please copy this link and share it. Um, send it to any of your friends that you think um, might be interested in what we do. Go Green Africa Initiative. Just click on the link. You'll find yourself in the group. It's a very good place to be. We have a lot of solutions. We talk about anything green, anything innovation, anything you know idea. And if you have any idea, you have um, any opportunities. What Oman abroad? Yes, Oman abroad. You have opportunities for us. Please don't hesitate to share with us. You have uh, comments. You have proposals. You know we are here to work with you. Anything that you know will benefit you and also benefit us. We are always available. We are available to travel to any part of the world to just make sure that you know we get things done. God bless each and every one of you. We really appreciate you. I don't know if uh, my my very good friend all the way from Mexico is uh, is still in the house. I want to give you the floor, sir. You have all uh, you have always been there um, all the time, giving us um, support to. Oh, I can. Oh, excellent, excellent, Mr. Aria Prado. Um, please, I want to ask you to unmute your user so that um, you can just have um, a minute or two with us. We have a lot of international presence here this evening. Um, if I see any one of you, um, I will appreciate you. Mrs. Patricia Wagita from Kenya, uh, and the rest, I will appreciate each and every one of you. Mr. Peria Prado, how are you? How is medical to you? How are you? Thank you, Ms. Ambassador Adeni. Thank you so much. Greetings from Mexico and all my best regards for all the attendees from this uh, this uh, webinar about the has avocado production in Nigeria and, and other parts of Africa. Thank you so much. It, uh, it's a very great for me uh, this opportunity for share with uh, with your with the Abozona, the Go Green Initiative, all the efforts that you are working for. Get a, a better circumstances for doing business in uh, in Africa. Yes, we are our specialists uh, in Has Avocado. Our family works with the Has Avocado crops and production orchards, real life production orchards in Michoacan, Mexico. So Michoacan, Mexico, as you know, it's the most it's a one of three avocados sold on in all the world comes from Michoacan, Mexico. So in this moment, our state. Uh, since 1995 that we begins and we return to the market uh, when, as you remember, Mexico was banned for a quarantine pests and diseases uh, from several years, but we, uh, the Mexico returns to the market in 1995. At this time, we have more than 170,000 hectares only for has avocado. And in, in all in the Michoacan state, we are more than uh, nearly to 30, 32 or 33,000 growers and producers that works every, all the weeks. We have avocado, fresh produce all year season. Our principal market, obviously, is the United States because we are the neighbors in the border. Uh, but uh, usually we have a lot of markets and we are involved, but the, the the most more than 80 percent from all our avocados production by year all the uh, we are talking the yield the crop production by year the 80 percent more than this 80 percent goes only to the u.s market but you have a lot of opportunities you are in the right lane so do you remember the united nations uh, told told to us and the last report from the United Nations, uh, the Has Avocado Fresh Produce will be the most selling fruit in all the world for the next uh, 2000, 2030. And this is a great opportunity for all the growers from all the community, the community that works with your initiative. So we are, we are working together and we, uh, in the next days, in the next weeks, uh, we, have, uh, we will be more involved from Mexico and for help to you and your group and your initiative for growing and get the most important is the knowledge, is the know-how and we can grow, we can participate with yours for improve the conditions for all the growers and products in, in Nigeria and the next countries beside you. Thank you so much for this effort. 
my congratulations for all the attendees this webinar. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Padre, for always uh, being there for us. Um, you really, really, really help uh, the association and you've helped me personally. Uh, every other thing is, um, I've, I've known about this. When I took this up as a, as a mandate, uh, it has always been positive from everybody. Anytime they see, anytime we travel abroad and um, they say, oh, you are from Nigeria, you want to do avocado, everybody is uh, so, so, so happy. Nigeria is a blessed nation. It's so unfortunate that we are not representing ourselves or having the high power to represent us very well. We are loved all over the world and the people look out for what we do. They want to partner with us. They want to do business with us. And we have all it takes. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of you here can participate in this. All you need is start with one sibling. You have the money, go commercial. You don't need to stress yourself. Let's work on this journey for the next five years and you'll be proud of yourself. We need to change the narrative. We can't wait for government to do everything because government don't even know what to do. And we are the government. This is the time I have to do this. Tomorrow, I might be empowered to another thing. So we need to empower our people coming on board. We need to help ourselves. If you have anything, you know anything, you have access to anything that can help your next door neighbor to move from one state to the other, please share with him or her. I really appreciate every one of you. Ah, as I ran up, Mr. Tululokwe Babayemi, you raise up your hand, please. Uh, unmute yourself. I always love, love this part because um, <laughs> Nigerians, we, we, we start things, we don't finish it. That's our challenge. So, <laughs> and this is uh, Yorubas, we say, uh, so because I'm going to be giving out something very soon as we're about to land up. Okay, Mr. Tulu, bye-bye. Thank you so much, sir. I've been your fan for a whole lot, like two decades now. And um, it has been a pleasure watching everything um, turn to billions in your hands. Well done, sir. And greater heights, sir. Uh, my question about land banking, I just want to see if you can give us more light about how it works. Okay. Let me quickly share that, and then it can even be a bonus. That's good. Now, land banking uh, is the process of banking land, just like the way you bank your money, keeping land for different purposes. Now, let me share a bit of my story with you. Um, I started with um, big time with Moringa in this country. I'm one of the first set of people that started Moringa, and um, I, we did very well. One thing with Nigeria is make sure you are among the first, this early starter. Make sure you're among the early starter. And the meaning of that is you must be a risk taker. If you don't, you are not ready to take risks, you can't make money. So I've always been a very big risk taker. I go all out, I think. So when I came back from Israel after my training, um, I did Moringa when we came back from India. Then when I went to school in, in, in Israel, and when I came back, I started pushing plantain. I pushed plantain in a village in Ogo State and CCT, C CCTN, that's the Chinese television came all the way from China to interview me in, in this town. I've been in the village for the past 13 years and I'm still talking to you there. I've made the village to a city where I have a school, there's church, the community is developing and I'm still there. Now, imagine the lands that we've got for 600,000 Naira per acre, 500,000 Naira per acre, 400,000 Naira per acre. Today, in the space of eight to 12 years, we are selling one plot for 1.5 million. We have six plots in an acre. That is an acre of 600,000 Naira. Eight years ago, what 9 million Naira in my hand today? And that is why I call on our people in diaspora the other time. I know a man in Canada. And I just want 20 or 30 people. I want people to live with because we're now talking good business. I know a man in Canada that has almost every three, three months, we must get land for him. He take loan, he send this money down, single digits, he send the money down, he buys land, and it doesn't stop there. He adds value. What do we do? 
when we buy this land, then we grade the road. There are some villages that just they, they use bike, only bike. And these villages are 20 minutes away from the express. Some of them are 15 minutes away. Some of them are 30 minutes, but because they use bike and they trek, it's like one hour. So when you go to this kind of place, you see the potential. There's, there are things I look out for. And for those people that have portfolios with me that I help do this, there are a lot of things we look out for. When we look at all those things, we're looking at the next five, 10 years, the projection, what is going to likely happen here? Okay, if anything is not happening, what can we do to make this place an outgate? So the first thing is, we spend some money, you grade the road to the farm or to the land. Grade the road there. When you grade the road, spend money by clearing that land. I don't encourage you to buy land and leave it. There's a difference between purchasing and possession. Don't forget that land has a lot of issues. And there are two ways you can buy land. It's either you buy from government, you get from government, or you buy from a money lender. The only reason we can buy land and we don't have issue, I have people that have lands with me for the past 10 years. I have not even set my eyes on them. And their land is there. It's because we are on ground. But I always tell most of my clients, I cannot be on ground 247. Anytime from now, I might get an appointment in FAO, I might get something because I'm not studying myself. I'm reading, I'm developing myself every day. And I need to move to the next level where I can also contribute nationally and continentally. Now, when you buy this land, you clear the land. You clear the land by bringing a bulldozer. If it's 100 hectares or whatever, you clear everything. By that time, you, you virtually process. If there's issue, the day the machine comes into the farm, that is when you begin to see the issue. So if there is no issue, you continue. After that, you can do two things. You see that you plant on the farm. You, plant, you can plant crop that you really don't really send like that in the cassava. Because you know what you, are good, you want for the land. You can just plant cassava. Cassava is very, very, very cheap to set up. Very cheap to set up. You plant cassava on everything. And just get somebody to be maintaining the farm. You know why you bought the farm. After that, then you now go to documentation. I tell people, don't spend the money you are supposed to get to get the lot of land and start spending on documents. Some people will call you, hey, that land you want to sell, do you have CO4 or land? CO4 for farmland. Even if I have CO4 and I'm selling back to you, you still have to do uh, government uh, consent. It's like you are doing CO4 all over. Are you getting it now? Buy the land, clear the land, take possession, and let it go that way. I've seen this same man, I've seen a situation where I just called one day, ah, oh, there's this 30 acre land we bought. Do you know that there's a company coming to Nigeria and they need 30 acre in so, 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 so. That land fits for that purpose. And this man sold that land times 1,000 profits within eight months. When I say 1,000 profits, Kosheso, ladies and gentlemen, Ikoshe Sosita, Masi, he sold it over there and brother. Oh, there's a 30 acre so He just called. Yes, we have it. It's there. And they bought it. Today, there's a company in Ogo State. The company built. Most of you that will drive, you see the very big company, they built on that land. The land that we bought for 800,000 euro per acre. We sold this land 30 in hundreds of million. So there are a lot of opportunity. Just make sure you connect with the right people, talk to the right people, do your due diligence, and by the grace of God, we'll move to the next level. Today, apart from agriculture, I play in the real estate sector. I currently have three estates in this place. Three beautiful estates. King Solomon Green Estate. I have Waterview Garden City, sitting on 55 acres of land, overlooking a beautiful water. Eden. I have Mojo Estate, and these are farmlands. So that's why I say the city today used to be somebody's farm before. So please envisage your next five years, envisage you know, your next 10 years, envisage your next 20 years, and plan ahead. Land is one of the things that can never fail you, provided you do your homework very well and do your foundation very well. I believe I've been able to, you know, motivate one or two people here this evening.
And um, I want to, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate it. So if you are interested to become a member of the Avocado Society of Nigeria, the registration membership fee is 50,000 naira. It's 50,000 naira. But for those of you in this room, 64 of you in this room, any one of you that are interested to join, you know, the first week of February, I'll be giving you, you know, 20% discount. I have the names here. I've screenshot these names. It's the 064. If any one of you get in touch with me, you are getting 20%. 20% is how much? That means with 40,000 naira, you can become a member of the Avocado Society of Nigeria. Everything happens online. Anywhere you are in the world, you can be a part. Even if you are not planting here, knowledge, self-development is crucial. You keep learning, you keep learning, you keep learning. God bless you. Thank you very much. And do have a lovely night rest. I love you all. Bye. Once again, you have my number, plus 234, woman and bro, that is what I use, plus 234-8065-652-0074. Um, my name is Ambassador Dini Inshallah. I love you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can all, uh, you can all unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is well. Yes, my well. Thank you, Shola. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's meet again next month. Let's meet again next month. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much from Russia. Mr. Amusha, please come and take me out of Nigeria. Ah, don't. You don't need it now. Better get you. Ah, go go party mo wa ni be ye. Ya wa to moti wa ni so wa wa dissolve me. Me o fe wa. Moti lo wa o. Kilo kilo ko train awa ba ye no. Eh, Mwaji. DJ, Belu DJ, on Lotting Bam Morning Toy, Mutin Bay, Catacatalosi, Jumolo Boni, Emma Pedumini, yes, or Mutin Bay Catacatalosi, Becalo, Bresini Clear. D. Watcher Paduni, a farm where to pay young commissi on Lorum Concorde, so you want to be a lady, even go 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 come meal, me, Timo Design, Tabashi, or Timba, and Timo Moo, whom you are free in Concon, what you want market, Mutisha, Nabdash, everything, think of. Person he produced me, one shot person, I will go. I will need a woman, I will need a bikini. Yeah, of course. It is well. <laughs> Mr. Mohammed, good evening, sir. Hello, Hi, good evening, you. Ambassador. Long time. Yes. 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 No problem. No problem. No problem. Um, you see, um, um, Maria mentioned about the pack house. Yes. And let's assume we um, the avocado society starts producing um, enough avocado. Mm -hmm. How about? How? I'm sorry. Adolf has avocado. How about those people who are, who have farms in the north? How would they get access to these uh, processing houses? No, it depends on where you are located in the north. Nasarawa, Just Play 2, and every state around Just Play 2 can do avocado. And now we can move avocado. I'm in Abuja. I'm in Abuja. Yeah, we do. We, we, are, we are in Abuja up till uh, last week. I come to Abuja because the federal government is now talking to us and um, they want to make uh, the national avocado, you know, the way things now. They want to turn it to the commodity thing. So we are consulting and, and the rest. So Abuja can do fine. We have a couple of farms in Abuja. Uh, some of our members, Abuja can do fine. Now, it is very easy. As avocado is very rugged. It won't even ripen, uh, ripen until like two, three weeks. 
So it can be moved from Abuja to the park house in Lagos and, um, and go. But I told you that at the initial stage, if you have enough from Abuja, it can fly from Abuja to Dubai because we have MOU in Dubai, we have MOU in, in Europe, I have, we have in UK, we have a lot of people that are really waiting for us. So see, market is not a problem. Even without park house, there are ways we can do um, cleaning on a small scale because the next five years, like I said, is still going to be small scale. It's going to be small scale. We can't even fit a 40 feet container with, with uh, how, many, how many of us are, are, are planting? We are not even up to 100 planting currently. And that is why we are doing this advocacy. That's why we are doing this every time. And um, this communication, this thing we did tonight will be coming out in the, in the national papers, uh, uh, anything from tomorrow, different national papers talking about the capacity building, sensitization and the rest. So you don't have any problem with your market. It's never a problem. It's never a problem. Avocado does, uh, as avocado does not spoil like, like the local one. No. Like you said, you, like you said, it's it's um it depends on your financial capacity. Yes, yes. Because um at the moment I have about 25 hectares of land in Guagualada. Yes. And um you are talking yes. about um uh, you want me to do the math for you? You want me to quickly do the math for you? Yeah. Okay, let's do the math. That is why, yeah. I like people that uh, does not rush out of meetings fast. <laughs> let's do the math together. We will still learn a lot of things as we are going out of see. Okay, let's uh, an an acre, an hectare is 2.5 acres. So in an acre, you are looking at um, I will be typing it, you are looking at 375 seedlings. <laughs> Now, 375 seedlings multiply, multiply by 3,000 naira. Multiply by, the, that is the cost of seedling, right? By 3,000 naira. Somebody should help me do that math. Let me do that math. Is it got to? Who is helping me? Okay, let me help myself. I just want to tell you something. what you are looking Nine point something. Let me show you what. No, no, it's 900 and something. Um, let me show you what you are looking at. You coming? Let me show you what you are looking at. Uh, After that, you know, when you look at this figure, sir, you will now look at, okay, let me start with 10 for now because this is what I have. Let me start with um, uh, five. This is what I have. That's how it works. You are looking at mm -hmm. one million. You are looking at one million one twenty five. That is the cost of seedling. That is the cost of seedling per hectare. Are you getting it? Are you getting it, sir? That is the cost per hectare. So you have twenty five hectares. If you multiply this by multiply by twenty five. You are looking at 28 million 125. But if, if you have 5 million or you have 3 million, even if you have 1.5 million, there's nothing you have that you cannot because you are not buying land anymore. Your case is so better than somebody that just wants to buy land. Now, that is the good news about land banking. Now, this crop will be on your feet for the next 50, 60 years. Now, by the grace of God, God will grant you long life. Let's say in the next 20 years, you make some money from avocado. And you said, I'm not interested again. Let me cut everything off. Do you know how much you will still sell a plot of land in Babuola? Or you will have occupied that land for the next 10, 20 years and it's still giving you money. So it's all about these 25 uh, hectares of land you have in Babuola that is worth billion. And we have people that does not even have 25 length or feet of land. That's what we are saying. So every one of us has our capacity. So we cannot all compete at the same level. Everybody has his own capacity. Some people does not even need to plant at all. Okay, sir. We will talk about. I will talk about it. Uh -huh. So, please, uh, uh, Ambassador Denny. And with you. I don't have yeah, please. Uh, the park. Uh, the park house. The park house uh, business is, is the cooperative not planning to go into it? No, there is a park house in Lagos already. Park house will cost you already. 
Park House will cost you not less than 500 million to, depending on how big it is, to around 1.5 billion. So there are two park houses that are already global gap certified in Nigeria. They do pineapple and some banana stuff. So we are going to be using that facility for lease. By the time we are doing export through container, are you getting this? You don't need park house when you are doing yeah. export to air freight. By the time we are doing container, that is, um, that is the projection of the next seven to 10 years. So already there's a back house. So we don't need to compete when we, we can just complement. I would rather rent the place and use the place than building a 1.5 billion facility. So for the investment in this thing, if you're interested, I have a nice package. Okay, let me yeah. share with you. I don't only do avocado. Maybe you don't know me. I do a lot of things. Currently, I have a deal. I assign MOU to supply Atarodo, which is Abanero to UK. Sign seal. We are starting the export by the next three weeks. And you will see me in UK or you read it in the newspaper. My brand is called Pepedem. It's going to be one of the Pepedem. Pepe it's going to be one of the first Pepe, Pepe from the soil of Nigeria to UK. Now, this is a contract that is signed. Even they gave us money. We've been giving over 30,000 pounds. So we are now expanding, and that is where we are putting money. But we don't open website and say investment. There are people that have grown with us for over 15 years that knows that if you give at any 100 million, you get your 10, you get your 15 percent every year. Sure, because we are now growing massively to make sure that we can meet two tons supply every week. Two tons supply is coming to Etro every week, air freight from Naku in Lagos. I mean, I bet I'm speaking to you. So as part we are producing, we also want to transit into greenhouse production. So that's why we are getting fund again. But we don't announce our investments. We don't talk to people about our investment. It's just between the circle of influence that we always raise our capital. So Mr. Ashley, if you are interested. I'll take, I'll take, uh, yeah, I'm interested. That, that's why I'm asking all these questions. Because you know, you know, investing in Nigeria from if, uh, from outside Nigeria is always difficult. I'm going to show you my MOU. I'm going to give you details number of my suppliers. I will give you everything you need to confirm. But if you know me, you will not even budge to confirm me. You know somebody one day. <laughs> this is my first time of attending the seminar of, of getting involved in with your program. Don't worry. So that's why Do your due diligence. Just take your time for the next one week. Do your due diligence across board. Okay. But even if you are not doing that, consider an investment. Get your lawyer in touch in Nigeria with the company. My company lawyer you will talk. And if you have a good, I like good figures. I like good figures. These are figures I don't If it's more than this figure, I don't stress. But the paper business is awesome. It's awesome. We have it signed deal. You can talk to our partners. Now, the beautiful thing is, we just do farm gates production. We just plant. We, just plant. we already have the sorting and the processing center in Abekuta. They take it from farm gates. So we don't even have risk. The only thing is expansion because we are doing open feed. I can share pictures and videos with you. We are doing open feed with um, irrigation watching film, but we want to invest in greenhouse and greenhouse is expensive. Eight meter by 30 meter standard greenhouse is around 7.5 million. So we are looking at a lot of it. The land is available, fenced, 20 acres fence where we want to put this greenhouse. We want to have one of the best greenhouse cluster producing a panero for UK market. So that's- Hello, Shola. Shola, how are you? This is Bridget. Madam Bridget, how are you? How are you? I actually just saw your, your message. Uh, the link is sent to me and I just joined. So I came in very late. Ooh. And I wasn't able to get all the things that were discussed on this uh, platform. It's recorded. Uh, it's recorded. I will make sure I send um, this to everybody. Okay. So now the reason I'm asking you this now 
is that I've been following you on your Avocado uh, program. I've actually been following you. So for those who doesn't know Shola, I know Shola very well. I've been following him for a very long time. At some point, I wanted to discuss pineapple with you. If you remember the time I brought in the American, that we wanted to do a uh, pineapple project in Nigeria. Um, I've actually been following you, and I still need to talk to you about that because you know I have a couple of things that we share together that we can also use in terms of uh, production of pineapple. Anytime you are pineapple. around, we will show you a big MD2 pineapple uh, sitting beside the dam, looking very good here in Abeba. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so what I wanted to ask, now that you just mentioned about the uh, Pepe Dam project, okay. um, I have actually just been invited to be a vice president for an association. We call it New Dawn uh, World Agricultural World Initiative. And um, I'm saddled with the, uh, with the task of looking for buyers of different projects that we want to do, even though we haven't really started. Whereas uh, I know you know that I do mushroom. So we're starting with the production of mushroom uh, in, in a cluster form, right? It's a so, very good one. Mushroom is good. Mushroom yes. is good. So, so we are, um, we are at the most moment, uh, you know, we have a land. I don't know what the program entails. If you have a land or that people can just grow on their own, uh, on their own land, uh, because you see, the problem is one of the biggest problems we have in Nigeria is the marketing of produce. Exactly. Yeah? So if exactly. you already have, if you already have a market for produce or was setting produce, then that makes the job really easy for a lot of farmers in Nigeria. So um, now that you have mentioned that you have an MOU that is signed, I will be talking to you later. So I need to get copies of your MOU. And I need to uh, uh, project. Hello. Hello, Madam Bridget. Okay, let me explain to you how I work. Um, the requirement, we have the requirements for our supply. We are not contracting it out because the challenge is people being able to produce the required requirement. So what we do presently is we are producing ourselves and um, because of the quality, we are producing ourselves. So what we are doing is we are raising capital to expand our production using greenhouse because we discovered that the number, do the number, um, the ton or the capacity you produce in open feed is low compared to what you can do in a greenhouse. So the project is exclusively private. Although, although by tomorrow, tomorrow I will be declaring something on my Facebook page. I just need, um, I think five people should do. Five people that has um, some money that they want to farm themselves. I want to give them land and I'm signing with them to buy back from them. But these people, I'll be giving them land beside me so that I can monitor what they are doing. But that I think should be for young people, not for uh, my daddies and mommy in this room. So I'll be putting it on my Facebook probably tomorrow. I just need five young guys that has around 1 million, 1 1.2 that they can use. They are using their money themselves, but I'm giving them land and I'm also buying back from them so that they can produce what I want from me, for me. So I'm not currently of taking from people, I'm producing it. I'm currently getting capitals you know, from, from investors that are ready to take 50% per annum uh, to expand my greenhouse uh, production. That is mm. what we are doing now. But I believe that as we grow with the market in UK, it will, because they, they already we've done sample, they trusted us, that's why they could even give us money to go and do this for them. So as we go, you know, what I just, what I, as a person, my mandate is to always break the barrier. When you say they are dubious people, they are, want people to know that they are not. There are people, no more. We are more good people than dubious people. When you say Nigerians cannot do something, me, I want to say, let us do it. We can do it. It's not about saying it, saying it, saying bad things, saying bad. So that's what I do. I always go out there, break the barrier, and make things happen. So I believe that there are a lot of things they ask for. I only pick up an arrow paper because it's easy for me to do. They are looking for okra. They are looking for a lot of things from Nigeria. Your, your, I just pick what I know I have capacity to do. But as I move with them, as I move with them, I will begin to now involve other people, other people, you know, and, and I believe we will all do something together. 
Somebody said, I have mushroom no market. Yes, I don't know much about mushroom market, but I have some people, I have some young guys that has mushroom in Abelkuta. And I've been teaching them about packaging and uh, marketing. And they are doing very well. In fact, um, my dinner, which is almost late now, is mushroom tonight. So I have been taking mushroom almost all the time. And they sell a kg for 2,000. Uh, Naira. She sell a kg. I personally taking the product to Baba Basu job. I'm taking to the wife of the governor. I, I, so that's what I do with young people. I help them promote what they have. So these young guys, they have the mushroom, and the mushroom is very, very delicious and healthy. So, mommy, there's nothing you cannot sell. I know you, man. Mommy, repackage. Repackage it. Don't let it be like you have mushroom you are not selling. Package it, make noise on radio, talk to people about the health benefit. That is the first thing. Remember the days of Moringa, mommy. We made a lot of money. Yeah. So teach people yeah. the health benefit of mushroom first, not the mushroom. But because Nigerians don't have enough information, Nigerians don't have knowledge. You cannot see a nutritionist on a national television or radio talking to Nigerians yeah, about the benefit of what to eat. Today, they will say right. water is good. Tomorrow, some people will say hot water is bad. Everything we are reading is true. Right. is true Google. And who are the people putting it there? It's the Oibos. So, mommy, please, design a program. I trust you can do it. Design a program yeah. to sensitize women, sensitize babies. Do you know that mushroom powder, man? When you dry it and mill it with powder, it's good for the babies. As it dry, yeah. Yeah. I dry it. Did you see it? If you see this is my for me. This is me. I am crazy. I'm crazy with idea and my implementation. That is my one, one of my feet. I can give you this if you can work with it, mommy. Don't send me, don't send mushroom. Don't talk about mushroom first. Talk about the potential, and people will take it. Okay. Thank you, Madam. Uh, let Madam uh, communicate with me. Yes. I will give her some recipes and I will give her some ideas on how she can sell her mushrooms. Okay. Let her communicate. Mommy, get in touch with Madam Bridget Okonowa. She is she's an international woman. She's a, you only see her once in a year in Nigeria. She's everywhere. <laughs> Madam, let's sit down and talk. I will talk to you about mushrooms uh, and then we'll see how we can okay, get, like Shola get in touch. Get in touch with her, please. Like, 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 like Shola said, like Shola said. One of Madam Bridget, please yes. get in touch with me as soon as you finish. My number is, uh, <laughs> let me put it here, please. Two, three, four. Uh, 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 Madam, I think you might need to just take my number because I, I will not be able to do that right now. Now, but please let me just drop my number. I just leave me a WhatsApp message and then we'll uh, give me. Give me. Dictate it. Okay, 081. Uh huh. Three seven zero. Yeah. Two zero. Mm -hmm. Five now we are nine. Please, we are networking now. Doctor Phillips. Five nine one. Five nine one. Five nine one. That's uh, the doctor. So I love yes. this. I love this. Okay. Well done. Yes. See networking. Well See high well level. High well level networking. I love. So, like, this is what I want to say. So this is what yeah. I want to say about mushrooms. A bit of information. Yeah. Okay. People, yeah. The Nigerian government does not know what mushroom is, and that's why they are not promoting it yet. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so loosely lucrative. Mushroom. Madam, pay attention. Listen. Mushroom, the uh, international market value, value for mushroom is about 69, 69 point something billion dollars. And we are losing about nine, 900 metric tons as against 1,200 metric, metric tons that we are supposed to produce in a year. Check it out. And mushroom is not seasonal. It grows around the year. Mushroom, you don't need to weed. You don't need to clear. You don't need to tilt. You don't need to plow. You don't need nothing. You don't need fertilizer. You can grow up mushroom right in your own room if you wish to. Okay? This is an area that has been abandoned for a very long time. People don't know, like Shola said, the awareness that we try to create is that people should know 
apart from the economic value of mushroom, people should know the health benefits. Okay? You know, remember a couple of years ago, <clears throat> the Nigerian government decided they want to add cassava to bread, right? Mushroom is one produce that you can add to your pastry, to everything that you eat. Everything. Like people who make baby food will buy mushrooms. The pharmaceuticals will buy mushrooms. The only thing we need, the reason why the market is not big in Nigeria is because people are not aware, like Shala said. People need information and ideas. Can you okay. form a forum? Can you form a forum and invite everybody to come in and participate? Oh yes, we can do that. But Shola, that one is not a free one, though. This is Shola, this this is a participant. Yeah, my name ah, is actually. Okay, that mm. one is not a free one, though. Boss. It doesn't matter, but just form it so that create it so that people can come in. It's only okay. it's only oh. as a Madam, uh, Madam, usually, usually, if you want to get traction, usually if you want to get traction, you start some free stuff. And then you modulate what you package for that free level, and then you start it just to. Shola, what do you think? Shola, what do you think? Now, That's the way to me, Let me explain. Let me explain something. Um, thank God that most of us, some of us here, have been around for a while in the industry. If you have market, Madam Bridget, if you have market for something, or you know you have edge solution resources capacity then it it can be paid it can be free okay. but the number of people that knows what you know matters a lot because right. we live in a country whereby you just discover you are 40 you are 50 and you've not been able to contribute anything to your society right so that is why most people, I know a lot of boss, my orgasm industry, so what's wrong with you? What's your problem? And that's why they don't really take you serious. So you don't take me serious. You know, people don't take me serious because I do things, but my name will open door any day, anytime. Yeah. So the first stage now is information dissemination and capacity building. If, you if I know program, about mushroom, I don't even want to sell. I want to be eaten first. So that <laughs> most yes, of you of are abroad. Most of you are abroad. If you go to a supermarket, you don't just buy things and eat. You first look at the cholesterol. You first look at the cholesterol. You look at that. Exactly. You are talking about. You guys are talking about. Um, what do we call moringas and the rest? Uh, supplement. When you are talking about supplement abroad. We are still talking about food. You people have left right. supplemento. You are now talking about super food. Abby, we are yeah. still on food, basic food to eat. As I'm speaking to you now, 10 o'clock, 10.30, going to 11, I'm not taking my dinner. By the time I want to take my dinner now, it probably might be swallowed. Then my stomach will come and will say it's big man. It's not big man. <laughs> so, so we need, especially those of you in diaspora, especially those of you that have the opportunity to travel around, you need to give yeah. back. Madam, share the knowledge back, yeah. you have. When you share the knowledge you have, you now design a product around it. Consumption will increase. For me, now, say, let me tell you this, you know, like about the diaspora. Let me say something about, let me say something about the diaspora. The diaspora should be promoting the Nigerian products abroad. Yes, but they don't. They don't. The, Nigerian, the Nigerians abroad should be the ones. Uh, what's the word now? They should be the ones developing the market for Africans. There is no way you anywhere China goes to, they go with their food. Anywhere Indians go to, they go with their food. Sp sp uh, Spanish, their food. Now we are eating burger. We are eating all their foods. Are they eating our? Food? Yeah. Yeah. But the important thing is that the Nigerians also in the diaspora needs to be aware of the opportunity of opportunities that are there in agriculture and agribusiness. They need to know. They need to understand because if they do not understand, they can't sell the Nigerian products. That is why we have the Go Green Africa platform, 
And I said it the other time that every one of you that you have programs or anything you want people like us to come around and talk about. Don't see me as a avocado or purpose. I'm an agribusiness development consultant. You understand? Call, yeah. I can talk to anybody and motivate, sensitize him or her to begin to look at what he or she can do. So you are- Shola, let me tell you, somebody invited me to Uganda. I was invited, I'm a Rotarian. I was at a conference in Nigeria and I was talking about Nigerian product, Nigerian produce, and now Nigeria is doing well in agriculture and all that. That was how I got an all expense paid trip by Rotary to go to Uganda to empower 40 women in uh, mushroom cultivation, snail rearing and beekeeping. So the Nigerians in diaspora can also do the same, set up a program, you know, call Shola to come and speak there, call Bridget to come and speak there, call other people pushing agriculture in Nigeria. Even if they can't pay for, for us to come, madam. Because they can, pay, they can pay for musicians to come and play for them. No problem. Yeah. Even if they can't yeah. pay for us, let them create a forum. We will talk to them also on, on Zoom. We'll yes, exactly. Media. You understand. Yeah. Bridget, so, please, Bridget, your, give us your number once more so that we can, we can invite you. Let's <laughs> say <laughs> <laughs> so you do a program that Shola and I can come and talk to you. You hear no, me? No problem. Shola is, right. Shola is already on board. Shola is, Shola is give me your, boss, give me your number. Shola, Shola is a big boss. So Shola is a, okay, 081 591. I'm going okay, to create Shola. Plus, I'm that's plus 234, Abby. Yes, yes. Shola, okay, I would like for you. you to be part of that uh, program. I'm going to set up a program real soon. On It's a sensitization program, so it's going to be free. I'm always so, available. Uh, and I would like I'm always available. Uh, I'm always available oh. for anything that... Richard, I what's, what's your last name? Okonofwa. Okonofwa. Madam Bridget Okonjo. Uh, Madam Valerie, I can see you. I hope it's the same, Madam Valeria. You, you're, you are one of the top and the first set of people that planted avocado in Nigeria. I hope you are the same person, Madam. Am I? Is, is, I thought you. I thought you would notice me there. Really? <laughs> you see, as much as, 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 uh, as, much as this, this but... brain, eh? This brain God has given me is uh, God is smart. <laughs> So I'm looking at, although, you know, people didn't put up their videos, but I know I know people. I know my people, yeah. and my people know me. How yeah, are you? Absolutely. Why is the man doing, madam? <laughs> Very well. Thank God. Thank God. I want to also, there is a day is coming that you'll be getting an award on this avocado team. Because I could remember that um, you are one of the first set of people that believed in us. Uh, I think you are number 10 Absolutely. that really believe in me Absolutely. when I started this. Um, when I came yeah. back and I was Absolutely. pushing avocado, you, you called me that you mm. love this. We should set up for you. We set up the farm for you. The farm is doing fine. Uh, we brought the partner from Kenya. Yeah. The farm is doing fine. I always love people yeah. that trust people. If people like you don't trust us, mm -hmm. I probably have been discouraged. Today, we now do projects in hundreds uh, of millions, but you first gave us the first <laughs> set of hundreds of thousands. So I really appreciate you, man. Share with us, how is your thank project? You, thank you, How is it going? It is doing well. Um, so we, we are, right now, I mean, the irrigation system is in place, so it's doing very well. Um, they are all thriving. I'm just praying for rain now, you know, because there's a difference with rain, you know. Yes, you the know, weather. But, but yes, the weather. But um, good, good thing. They're all doing very well. They're thriving. Awesome. They're thriving. I can awesome. feel it during rain during the um, Hamata. You are the first set have... of people. You are the first set of people that will touch as avocado in Nigeria. You remember the conversation we had. You remember yes, so a we, group we of people. Grow. You remember a group Would of people grow? that said it can never grow in Nigeria. You remember that? Oh, okay. yes. Can it grow ah, in Nigeria? If it can grow, they should have been growing it before. Why is he demand this one that we're not talking about it? Mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Today, is it not yeah. growing? Man? It's growing, no. Mm. It's growing Thank very you. well. <laughs> Thank you for believing me. Now. It's standing tall. A whole group form so a meeting. <laughs> they form a forum huh? and saying that as avocado is not grow in Nigeria. If it can grow, will it be now that somebody will be talking about it? We will have been growing it since. We don't have the weather. We don't have it. And Madam Valeria will say, oh, gosh, Allah, can they say, Madam, we last now. <laughs> we bless God today. <laughs> Shala, you know, this is funny. What you just said is funny. Because I mean, when I was growing up, my mother had so many trees of avocado and we just sell them very cheap. I'm sure people were not aware then. We just put them in basins and carry them to the market and sell them cheap. And I remember when they wanted to build on that land and they just cut down all the avocado. Yes. You know, it's so funny because when I talk about when I see the way avocado is going now, I regret those days that I saw them cut down avocado trees that my mom had. Do really? you know that I any think... avocado tree that you cut down and it's still um, four months, five months fresh, I can revive it with us. This one is when I was a very little girl. Oh, Shola, that one cannot be revived. A- avocado, we have a lot of avocado in the East. We bring in a lot of rootstock from the East. Do you know one thing? Even in Lagos, uh, in Lupeju, almost every house around that place has avocado. Do you know why? Because the foreigners... You know, the expatriate stills in that area. They eat it a lot, yeah. 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 So people don't really think. I'm sorry to say this. People don't think. And when they see somebody thinking, they want to bring, you know, their mouthpick opinion to peel the person. Down. Exactly. Yeah. So when you come out with something, okay. they will say some people will still tell you now that the mushroom that Mrs. Um that mommy has is not good. Though. Ah, mushroom <laughs> that they grow in the house. It's not, you see, most people can't really fight on it. They can't reason it. They can't see the possibility because they have been so, 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 so caged into a corner. We are talking about- Okay, I usually tell people, I usually tell people about mushroom. This is how I start with mushroom. When I was very young, growing from a very humble background, mushroom used to be our meat that we eat. My yeah. mom would send us to the bush to go and, you know, uh, the reason I have a program, uh, a training that I do, I call three in one, is because I understand uh, mushroom and snails. In those days when I was young, my mom would say, go to the bush. When we couldn't afford even boga to put in our soup, my mom would say, go to the forest. We had this rubber plantation close to us. She would send us there and we would go and use stick to be looking for mushroom, picking mushroom from dead trees, right? So, and each time you see mushroom, you find snail. This is why, you know, I have this training program now i put it together and uh, that time we used to think that we were eating poor we used to think we were the poorest people because the only thing we ate then was mushroom believe me we didn't have money we were just eating mushroom because that's the only thing we could afford we didn't buy it, it was you're actually eating push. a lot of protein a lot of protein but you know by looking at it now i realize that we were it is so healthy and healthier than everyone okay because, like Shala said, you sell a, a kg now for like 2005. In fact, I buy from this uh, very lady recently, and uh, because I was trying to supply someone, I didn't have enough. And I got, uh, I wanted to buy from, you know, someone because people are not growing mushroom, no, are not cultivating mushroom. So, and the lady said, from the last time I bought for her, it was 2000, and then she said, now it's 3005. Um, I, I also wanted to buy the dry one because dry one is very expensive. The last time yes, it's I got expensive. It for but why they yes, are drying it? Why they are drying it is because they couldn't get market for the fresh. But for me, no, I like I like the taste of the fresh. The, no, Shala, that's not the reason. Not because they really yes, of course, there's not much market for mushroom, you know, as it were, because you really need to develop the market. Uh, but the dry mushroom has a longer shelf life, and then it is better exported this is is, is the easiest one to export because mushroom fresh does not have a, a long lifespan do you understand so yeah. um and you know the truth of the matter the the dry mushroom shola have you tried it it's really like me you can use it for anything and it, it doesn't lose its um it's a uh, taste or nutrient at all do you okay. understand that's so, what i'm um, taking tonight that's what i'm taking let me show us <laughs> 
That's what I'm eating it's tonight. Really it's really, really good. After my training in Uganda, I was coming back. They gave me one almost uh, 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 25 kg of dried mushroom. <laughs> I came to Nigeria. I was eating mushroom. I eating mushroom and that mushroom. Was, I remembered my growing up. That oh, when I was growing up, I was eating mushroom and I felt I was poor. In fact, this time I ate it with an attitude because now I'm feeling very rich eating mushroom because the the high nutritional value you can't compare. The cost you cannot compare. And you know, it was funny. The reason when Shola was talking about developing market just now, <laughs> you know, you cannot find mushroom in any market unless you get to specific areas. Okay. Now, how do we now flood the market? That is why more people need to call the mushroom. More people need to go grow mushroom until the man, the woman selling in the market can have it as part of what she sells. The woman selling a goosey, a goosey and the, all those things you put in your soup. They can also have it as part of what they sell. That's where we want to go. Okay, because mushroom is healthy. People do not realize that mushroom is healthy mm -hmm. and it's expensive. I think like uh, uh, Chief Shola said, building that market is key. The last park I go is from uh, Babcock when I went to drop my boy. And they have uh, the dry worms. And everywhere you look around, you can't get. I mean, that's something I used to uh, me get stopped up. So if yeah. the market is not there, people are afraid to produce. So I think for those of you that are key players in that space, you need to really be aggressive building that market up. If you build the market up, I can tell you with the awareness growing up with uh, health promoting uh, food and meals, it will, it will really take traction. But someone has to build the cart and build that market up. Part of anything the related to health, part, anything part of related the to health, People are ready for it. The challenge now part, is part of, part of, part of the things, uh, brother, that we teach people right now is how you also develop markets. You know, you know, Shala said something just when he was talking to the woman selling that wants to sell mushroom. You see, the point is the reason shops don't have mushroom is because people don't produce. As big as shop right is, I don't know if you know the number of shop right shop right outlets in Nigeria. You go to shop right. One time you don't find mushroom. You go one time you find mushroom. Shoprite don't stock mushroom that much because people don't produce. And Shoprite wants to buy mushroom. And again, it's consistency because you can't have mushroom today and in the next one month you don't have mushroom. I went to Spa Ilupeju specifically, and every time I've been to that shop, I haven't seen mushroom, especially the oyster mushroom. What you still see are the bottom mushrooms, okay? And the oyster mushroom is edible and medicinal. That is the one that they use for, uh, for, for uh, what is it called now? These uh, drugs, all these uh, 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 like Fanadol kinds of things. Some of these drugs you see has mushrooms in them. If you know organo gold, organo gold has a specific mushroom that they use. They call it galadima mushroom. There are different, one billion, one, over one million species of mushroom. But what we want to what people need to know that the ones that are edible and the ones that are medicinal and the ones that are poisonous it is during these conversations that you get to know all of that okay the market is really huge the truth of the matter is huge although it's bigger uh, abroad so most people some people that are producing their focus is really exporting but we need to create the awareness for the nigerian people because the reason is because nigerians are fucked out working too hard and we don't they don't have taken enough, enough nutrients and mushroom has a lot of nutrients values that people need to intake every day. So, Chola, there's a, there's a, there's a, talking about uh, whether something will grow in Nigeria or not. I have this, uh, I don't know if you know about it. Chola, are you still there? I'm here, I'm here, madam. Okay, well, I really so, appreciate, um, I appreciate all these people waiting. Oh, excellent, great people. I'm I'm so excited too. Okay, so um, when you talked about uh, when when you started, people were wondering whether uh, whether avocado will grow in Nigeria. Yes. Well, it's funny. Yeah, because a lot of things grow in Nigeria that we are not can grow in Nigeria that we are not aware of. So I was uh, I brought a pro a, um, <laughs> a, a, some seeds back from uh, uh, Nosgalis in America. I don't know uh, if you know a pelican. Do you know about pelican fruits? No. 
Do you know about pelican fruit? No, but I can look it up. Okay, look at pelican fruit. I have a bag full of things that I brought in from America. When I saw the, the CEO of the company, they have a huge farm, maybe like 30 acres, no, maybe like uh, 50 acres of land where they grow pelican. They use pelican for peanut butters. They use them for all this health food. They use pelican for a whole lot of things. Pelican oil, pelican everything, pelican, pelican. Just, just look it up. Everybody, look it up. So they wanted to give it to me. Or that I requested to have it. And they said, nah, you're from Nigeria. It might not grow in Nigeria. I said, well, I don't know. But just give me the bag. You know, funny enough, I have the bag since like 2000 and uh, about four years now. I still have the bag with me and they're still there, Shola. So, what is the spelling? What is the spelling? Pelican. P-E-L-I-C-A-N. Pelican fruit. So, and I know, Shola, that you like to do experiments with things. Ah, experiment um, kill me. <laughs> so I'm thinking that maybe I should, we should look at how we can maybe try that out and see if it grows in Nigeria. But yes, it's just send it to me. Expensive. Send some to me. Send some to yeah. me. I'll plant it. Yeah, very, very, very expensive. In fact, since I brought it from, from the U.S., I still, still didn't get it. In fact, I if still I still break it, it, I can still chew it. I can still eat it. I still didn't get it. Huh? Type it. Type, type huh? it in the chat room. Okay, Pelican. Okay. Okay, Pelican. Okay, uh, Mrs. Yes, Root. Pelican. Mrs. Root Denton. Do you know Mr. Tune Denton in Augusta, Nigeria? Because that's my girl. Hey, Madam, how are you? Thank you. Oh, ah. We are, we are, we are the one taking care of a guy in Nigeria. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Nice having you today. Yeah, thank you. So you like agriculture? Very much, sir. Woo! I was the first Nigerian man to plant plantain in South Africa. I smuggled the species into <laughs> South Africa. I planted in Pretoria. So it will grow. I, I, it will grow I, during I, uh, normal season. When it comes to your chili visit, you will die. It will grow for exactly. the past four years. It has been doing like this, like this up to now. It has never fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's told that uh, you know you only eat banana, so there is no plantain. It's expensive. So I told my friend, I said, "Leave me, I will plant it." Me and I, I took five and I smuggled in. I, I planted them. They were doing fine, but it will just grow. Not knowing, but the more. Support it and like it. They just keep going for it. Just keep going for it. I also was in Swaziland. I brought moringa for the king of Swaziland. I don't try. Oh. Yeah, I don't try. Okay. I don't work. Huh? <laughs> I love Swaziland. I've been in Swaziland. Yeah, I took I took, um, I took moringa oil, moringa balm, and this thing to Swaziland. After after. Uh, the late, um, the late uh, pastor, um, TB Joshua, is the most uh, sought after uh, product in the southern region. <laughs> we we also sell the church water. When we are traveling, we will travel with the church water. A lot of people will pay premium. In Swaziland, <laughs> then they buy aboliki a lot. Yeah, Boliki, a lot of South Africans actually knows it now because especially during winter, yeah. Boliki is one of the that is essential in every home. Yeah. We really work out. We don't work out. <laughs> it is a plantain grill okay. in, in pit. Okay. I tried it all. There are a lot of, see, agribusiness is crazy. We planted a wedu and we're making a lot of money in South Africa. A lot of money. They will do fresh. We keep moving to the market. People will be calling. And Ugu, ah, there is money in Agri. I I love eating uh, um, intestine. You people bring it. You don't eat intestine at the Pomo. So it's very cheap. You know intestine. Your the cow offers. Yes. Yes. Uh, you don't eat it. We do. Most people don't like it. It's always very cheap. 
So when I buy two or three kilo, I have my steel pot is filled up. Now, it's a country, I really enjoy that country. It's a nice place. In one of these days, I will still come and do one MSc or one PhD there before, before we answer. It's nice to meet you. I really appreciate it. Me and Oga have been talking uh, about, about you. So now that you came, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thank Mr. Amojola, Yusuf, I can see you. Um, silent observers. Uh, great people, great people. Dr. Sonny, over three years. Mm -hmm. There is God, though. <laughs> there is God. Social oh, media, yeah. social media yeah. has really changed a lot of things. If we cannot touch ourselves, Thank you, sir. Our... I know you don't know, but uh, I'm a bee farmer, actually. I know you don't know. Bee? Really? Wow. Oh, five years now. Bee, bee. Oh, I, don't know that. I never knew. Oh, awesome. Uh, any of these days, when I'm back in Apple Kuta, we'll talk more. Okay. Thank you, Oh, Mr. Well, that means, Mr. That means you Mushon. sell honey, right? You that have a, you a have wedding in US? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. But at the moment, we don't. We are just talking the hives. Please chat me up because I need uh, I need let's, uh, talk. Uh, let's talk. You need to uh, currently we don't have we're just uh, putting hives in the market. I mean in the, the, in the push. Or still send me a message so we can keep in touch. Okay, no problem. Great people. So <laughs> gentlemen. You know, believe it. I was giving it to people around Mokora. And we'll see the dining You just have to try something. Don't believe that something cannot be wonderful. This same thing affects all our life relationship, business. When they say it can't, it can't work, try it first. I won't just listen to you and say it can't work. You can imagine how much you'll be spending on the way to and all this thing. But now you've been able to, 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 to create that solution. Of course, of course. So we help us. Absolutely. Let's, let's all come together and, and do things that will make our community and our continent a better place. I love each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Amount. Thank, I really you. thank you, Shola. Thank you so much. I'll keep in touch. I will send you something. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.